Hey! Hey! Boy, there's so much to talk about. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. <laughs> hey, Scott, good morning. Word up, my man. That was pretty funny. Rafe, good morning. Good morning. Lauren, hello. Hi. Moon, hello. Uh, and also with you. <laughs> you want to tell the audience what you said? Yeah, I'm constipated, okay? Oh, that's not... And I well, said, if I need to excuse myself, don't freak out. It's just, I got to... Stuff to do. <laughs> Lucky for you. And I well, said, well, stuff she held do. it in on National Fart Day yesterday. I did. Now, and this is what happens, happens dude. Do see not what happens? follow me in anything. Consequences. Go, man. Bummer. I know. And now, Lauren's go, Lauren goes, hey, if I just run out of here, just, you know, I said, did you have Thai food again last night? <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. She yelled at Full you. transparency no. for our audience. Um, I keep it real, okay? And so sometimes... <laughs> I got to alert you guys, because this first hour, we do nothing, no commercials, no music, nothing. Yeah, we're just going to chop it up. We're going to chop it up, and that's the beauty of the Rizzuto. Is your stomach, I wear a diaper, because I'm is committed your to the bubbling? show. I have the bubble guts today, and oh. trust me, I got a line of Pepto. I got my Tums over here, but sometimes a I got a... line of Pepto. I just, yeah, she just blasted a rail of Pepto I right did. before we... My cocaine is pink. No, it's fine. Everything's fine. Just don't look at me. Actually, cocaine will make you go. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Almost immediately. I'll make it go. Oh. Scott? Yep. All right, I'll bring it in. Okay, well, <laughs> some cocaine. loosen yeah. me up, man. Yeah, and Carriker just gave me some, so I'll bring it over. And okay, I know people is, don't like Carriker's always this, got baby wax in his this cocaine. Is... <laughs> Uh, oh, the character cocaine? Oh, yeah, the cocaine is laced with yeah. baby laxative. China white. <laughs> it's cut. So oh, makes it I funny. have something for you. What is it? This is going around. This is a constipation cure. Great. Interesting. You ready? Yeah. Uh, who's got an orange? Moon. Oh, man. Somebody Normally I do. Sure. I, have a, uh, I have a pair. No, it's not going to work. Got to be citrus. You have two oranges? I usually have plenty We need of an orange. orange. Man. So this sounds like a prank, but some people say it works. So an Instagram influencer's uh, cure for constipation is to eat an entire orange, peel, uh, peel and all. Okay, what? Eat an entire orange, peel and all. So bitter. Wash it first. Cut it into slices. Coat each slice with a generous amount of cinnamon and cayenne pepper and dig in. Really? So what's the peel have to do with it? You're doing yeah. citrus, cayenne, that fiber, uh, and the other stuff. I mean, all of that's, you know all that other stuff works. Well, I'm going to tell you what the experts say. Here, Here's the woman talking about it. This is my viral constipation hack that literally works in five minutes. It works about 95% of the time. So if you're needing a little push, try this constipation hack and wait five minutes. And if you've tried this before, let me know how it went in the comments below. Hey, we're all human and do the same thing, but sometimes we need Mother Nature to literally help us along. It's cheap, effective, and works fast. Smash that like button. Woo! Well, yeah, the, the peel has vitamin C, three times more vitamin C than the inner part. So you're getting a ton of vitamin C. Vitamin A, folate, push riboflavin, push. thiamine, all kinds of stuff in there. Rival get you going. Get you. All right. Well, thank you for experts, that tip. Experts are not so sure. Oh. Uh, eating the peel of an orange is generally safe as long as you wash any, like, the pesticides and stuff off. <laughs> Those are the good parts. But it, but it might give some people an upset stomach on top of still being constipated. So mm. Right. You're really rolling the dice there. <laughs> then you what if the you're shot. desperate? Then you got them pill poops, you know? You don't want that. The what? The, the peel, peel poops. The peel poops. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, they said pill poops. I'm kind of dead. I, don't know I can't talk is. yet. Why don't you have coffee? I do have coffee. Rizzuto. Yeah, I, I had it on. I always chug my iced coffee down olive, and that has happened already for me this morning, and so it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Nothing, huh? <laughs> huh? Hey, speaking of stomach aches, another... Viral thing is going uh, going crazy on the internet, uh, and I'm saying, please, please don't try this at home, kids. Some idiot on social media is driving clicks by doing what uh, he's dubbed his raw chicken experiment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is this the same idiot good. that was doing it earlier? There's there's another guy, a couple months ago that I Doesn't saw. Doesn't mean he's eating it. Was 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 saying every day, uh, here's my raw chicken for the day on my 90 days of every day eating raw chicken no, challenge. No, and this is not. Did you like see that guy? I don't think it's the same guy. Was he doing it for health reasons? I don't know. Like I think a, everybody's uh, doing it for TikTok reasons. Financial health. Do you ever see that guy, the Liver King? Oh yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that, that guy was busted doing steroids and stuff like that? But he'd eat oh, like yeah. raw, like right. you know, raw heart. Oh God. You know, for health reasons, this guy is doing it to get himself sick. He's eating raw chicken every day until it makes him sick. Oh, no, th th that's the one that I saw. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm mixing up too. I did see him because he he holds up to the camera and goes, "All right, day eleven of eating raw chicken until I get sick." Yeah. Okay. Here, here he is talking. Oh boy. Day eighteen, eating raw chicken every day till I get a tummy ache. Yeah, it's I got to get on ache. a flight in about one hour, so I'm just having a quick breakfast. Don't try this at home. When you get chicken stuck in your teeth, you can use one of nature's toothpicks. Uh, and that, by the way, is the nail of a chicken foot. Ew. Mm. Today we're going to try some chicken wings. And I got this hot sauce. It's from Hot Ones, and it's usually the last one that they use. I might have made a mistake. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Really excited he's doing this before he gets on a flight. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, he's almost three weeks in, and he's, he's still alive. So, uh... Yeah, he's eating raw chicken every day until it makes him sick, which is, which it will once he runs into enough salmonella. So, what a goofball! What Good luck. That's an interesting thing to do. I guess he likes being in the hospital. Hey, smash that like button, <laughs> subscribe. For now. <laughs> mm -hmm. For now. Yeah, salmonella is no joke. I mean, that's. Yeah, man. I mean, people, di little kids have died before. Like, you ever watch Food Inc? I think that's the documentary where they talk about salmonella and. Just the meat industry in general. Now, can chances happen. are, if you get salmonella, I mean, you'll be sick. You're not going to die. It's usually like kids and the, you know, elderly people with immune, you know. Immunocompromised. Immune, yeah, immune compromised uh, situations. But uh, I still wouldn't want this. I know. <laughs> so not silly. for any amount of likes. Why would so you want to hurt yourself in that way? And then also take up the hospital bed for somebody else who... Actually needs actually it. Actually needs something. Yeah. Actually needs it like an actual, like, yeah. I got sick, not of my own doing. Yes. Idiots. Okay, which brings up this scenario. What would you do for money? <laughs> now, some people say it's Im it's impossible to fi to pick their favorite child, but it's not, you know, it's not, of course. But but here's something that, that actually is really a hard call. Somebody on social media asked people. You are offered the chance to flip a coin. Tails gets you $1 billion. Okay. Heads gives you continuous and incurable hiccups for your entire life. Entire life. 50-50 oh. shot to that billion. So tails gets you $1 billion. Heads give you, gives you a continuous incurable hiccups for your entire life. I'm doing it. And, right. not, and not flipping the coin guarantees you both. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay, well, if you got the billion, would the hiccups really impede on your joy? I of, like, living so. your best life? I think so. See, you're flipping instead of not flipping. What would you choose? Man. Tails get you a billion dollars tax-free. Okay. Right in the bank. Heads get you hiccups. Not flipping get you both. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, how long do I have to decide? I need a solid. I need to sleep on this one. I need a solid day. <laughs> I'm gonna minutes. need an answer. <laughs> how, long are, how long are the hiccups for? Your entire life. life. Incurable. Life. Yeah. Hmm. You can't hold your breath. It's pretty awful. You can't skate. You know. Boo! You can't scare the hiccups away. Got a billion dollars to sink into hiccup research, I guess. Mm -hmm. Incurable. All right. Incurable. You think I'll flip? Doing this the whole time. I think I'll flip. I'm flipping too. I'm gonna say a solid prayer. Your will be done. Boop. Tails. Tails. Let's go. Mm. That's what I'm doing. But you're a singer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you would have to do that because otherwise you just get hiccups and yeah. you can't sing anymore. Yeah, but then you get a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about family and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah it's generational much. money. I mean, that's, that's. Yeah, I mean, I could do. Sacrificing. I could, I could do the sacrifice, but at the same time, like. Like your kids' kids will be taken care of. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think probably your kids, kids, kids will be taken care of. Yeah. yeah. That's a billion dollars. I'm not sure if my kids and their kids would ever want to be around me, though, if I'm... Hey, sound, like a, sound like the town drunk from a cartoon. It doesn't matter. Your sacrifice. <laughs> I don't know. Is that what you would do? No, I'm flipping. <laughs> I'm flipping. <laughs> nah, I'm And now we might have hiccups <laughs> and no money. I'm very selfish. We should see right now if we get hiccups or not. And this is why I need a day. Yeah, I'm changing here, my Here, let mind. me get it. Actually, that's a good idea. Let me get a coin out. Um, now, I, now I take the sacrifice. Now we're going to find out for real. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yes, oh, this is real. Don't we have a coin real. flipper up on the, uh, don't we have a... Oh, yeah, we do. Hang on a second. Oh, oh we well, got a... the AI. This is the We got an electronic school. coin flipper. All right, Moon said you're flipping. Ready? What an unnecessary thing to have. <laughs> All right. All right, it's Tails. <laughs> Tails gets you a billion bucks. Heads, you got hiccups for Heads, life. Heads, hiccups for your entire life. Riz, you're flipping, right? 
Or are you I'm flipping. All right, here we go. I'm flipping. Scott Rizzuto. That oh, coin. Oh, oh, that, that coin doesn't flip. Oh, we'll pick it up. What's, what's, what's it say? She dropped it. It's, dropped it's still spinning. It's still spinning. Still it. spinning. <laughs> oh, this is the craziest flip Tails! ever. Tails! You got a oh, billion dollars. Oh, I got a billion dollars. Yeah! Oh, look at you, bro. Woo! All right. Yeah. Look at that. I got to stand up and do that. All right. All right. So Can you make it actually flip, though, and not... I don't know. You just... I can't flip in the morning. What happened there, by the way? You threw the coin there. I think it hit the ceiling. Yeah, it's the inception flip. That's my cool move that I do. Somehow got it to just spin in the air like a moon. Mooners. Show me tails. Show me tails. Show me tails. Moon slipping. Tails! Oh, Tails! 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 it's getting better than our odds here. All right. Yeah, our odds are greatly improved, Scott. <laughs> as, as silly as this is, that felt really good. Thank good. you. Good. Yeah. welcome. Rafe, are you flipping or are you just taking it? Everything's coming up risen. That man. felt really good. All right. Well, I mean, for... I really needed that well after the last... Now, what would you do, though, for I real? didn't flip at all. Heads. Yeah. Oh, you got hiccups for life. Sorry, <laughs> sorry bro. Didn't flip at all. Hiccups. Sorry. She just You're dropped it on the floor. That's her point. Well, everybody's judging my move. All right. Um, give me tails, please. Tails? Oh, oh that was a good flip. Tails! Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What about Rafe's the, the hiccuping uh, comedian. Are we the hiccup twin? I can win Here AGT at least. Yeah. Give me a story to get on America's Got Talent that will get me through to the finals. It's tails! Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, you dirty oh, oh, We'll each give you something. That's, we'll give you something. You can yeah. no, it's fine. It's it her walk. fault. She didn't flip it at all. She just spun it. <laughs> she put it heads up and spun it. <laughs> I didn't mean what kind to. of car do you want? You want something? I don't want anything. Yeah, I man. got Willie's tour bus for you. I bought I will it for get, you. I will get first place on America's Got Talent and be the hiccuping comedian and have a very successful career. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, America has spoken. Go and on. Most people would flip the coin. Fifty-seven hmm. percent of people would flip the coin. Well, you have mainly to. for the chance to skate with a billion dollars and without constant hiccups forever. Uh, and about forty-three percent of people would accept the hiccups if it meant they'd be a billionaire. So not flip. Hmm. All right. One person said, uh, "I don't even care about the money. I just don't want the hiccups." <laughs> yeah. Well. Now that it's that on record be... that we chose and flipped, if this scenario ever becomes real life, can we defer to... Yes. Yeah, we've already flipped yes. the coin. Yes, well, That's we, legal. Have, uh, it's on. Yeah, we have participated. it on. Yeah. Like it's documented. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We did it. Yes. It's Fair been documented well. forever. It'll be out there. Yes. Put this on a hard drive, Scott, just in yeah. case. Wait, wait. Uh, we need f at least four out of five to see if we agree on this. Although, <laughs> although uh, having hiccups for the rest of your life, incurable... Yeah. I mean, got to be torturous. I mean, you can't sleep very well. There's a dude well. in the news. We talked about him a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Didn't he have, like, for 23 years or something? Y yeah, decades. And there, was a, there, was a, there was a gal that had it, too. And yeah. uh, I think one was, like, from trauma, maybe, and the other was they didn't know. They didn't know. And they, they were going all over the world to different doctors trying to figure out what that could be. Well, on AG, did you guys watch America's Got Talent last night? Because they had that comedian, Rafe guy. Rafe mm. Williams with yeah. incurable hookups. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Boy, got the golden buzzer, though. You got the yeah. golden buzzer. <laughs> Moving on to the next round. You going yeah. to Hollywood. He's going to Hollywood. <laughs> 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 Quiet on set. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Hey, this article from last year, Bo Jackson, reveals yeah. he suffered from hiccups for nearly a year. What? Yeah, I remember that. Wow. Bo knows hiccups. Sports legend Bo Jackson suffering from incurable hiccups. And he's an archer. <laughs> oh, Damn. yeah. He's like a professional archery guy. Imagine trying to, like, shoot a bow and arrow with incurable wow. hiccups. Bo is a, is a professional life liver. Bo Jackson to undergo procedure for year-long battle with chronic hiccups. Procedure? Yeah. Oh, man, see? And just to prove it, you can't have it all. The guy's literally got everything, but pff, I guess this is the price. Uh, Tell you what. I'm an NFL legend who's had chronic hiccups for a year. I even tried to smell a porcupine's ass to get rid of him. Yeah, I remember that. That was the thing I read. That he smelled a porcupine's ass? Yeah. Bone well, nose quills. Well, who has <laughs> Bone nose quills hard, dude. Uh, the MLB and NFL star, age 60, claims he sniffed the ass of a porcupine in a desperate attempt to get uh, mm -hmm. rid, of his, uh, rid of his hiccups. Let me see here. I'd sniff about anything you told me to if... Uh... If I had chronic hiccups. Hmm. He is the only athlete in history to be named uh, an all-star in both baseball and football, but since July of 2022, the former Heisman Trophy winner has been plagued by almost constant hiccups. And he's trying almost everything to get rid of the chronic issue. I'm sorry, Bo. 
He revealed, I've done everything. Scare me. Drink water upside down. Smell the ass of a porcupine. It doesn't work. <laughs> wow. How does uh, stuff happen in your sleep? Why is it porcupine ass? I, I don't know. Why not? I don't know. I mean, does a porcupine's ass smell any different than a, a, a rodent's ass? You think somebody was messing with him? Somebody probably just threw it out there, you know, trying to think of the most random thought. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I would, and, and he was like, well, you know, I'll give that well, a little scary. Well, I'll scare you. Right, bigger, scare you right. Did that. Drink a lot of water. Okay, did that. Hey, dude, you smell a porcupine's ass? I'm going to try it. Wait, wait. Yeah. Maybe it's like He a doesn't have the hiccups thing. anymore, right? I don't know. He What's the follow-up? Yeah, I haven't heard. Okay. I if he doesn't, then I guess it, we could say Those are articles from when he discussed having them. So you got a billion dollars now, or at least four of us do. Sorry, Rafe. What are we doing? I'm getting a what really cool house. I'm going to start with nothing. I'm going to start with turning off every alarm that's in. Yes, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> that's over. <laughs> yeah, every, every reminder, you got to be here, you got to be here, you got to be here. It's, I'm just going to erase that and then just look at it, yeah. a blank page, for at least 24 hours. Was, uh, was uh, Pablo Escobar a billionaire? Oh, for sure. They say, when he possibly the wealthiest man? Yeah, that's the right way. He was possibly the wealthiest man on earth. Yeah, of wow, all time. really? Something the king like of that. cocaine. Because he had it so hidden, no one knew exactly what it was worth, but they think it was, you know, hundreds of billions. He had an equivalent of $70 billion. Okay, so yes, he okay. was a billionaire. And did you know that at his house in Columbia, he had like a, a zoo? Yeah. So he had a zoo at his house with, with exotic animals. Right, like rhinos and stuff. Hippos. Hippos, I mean. Somebody wanted to see a zoo, and he said, we'll just, we'll just bring okay, one here. Okay, well, they're, they're, ha they're a having zoo. a problem in, in Colombia. Yeah, the, his hippos have gone to people, right? His hippos are out. so <laughs> They kill people. So, so I guess when, you know, Escobar died or when he went to prison that first time, they took some of the animals to zoos, and okay. other animals, they just let go. Oh, no. <laughs> Headline from yesterday. Pablo Escobar's... Invasive cocaine hippos are now reportedly attacking people. I smell a movie in the works. Yeah. So he had four hippos. Mm -hmm. They let him go. Wow. And they've been humping a lot. They've been humping a lot. <gasps> and they went from four, and now there's about 170. Get That's out of here, wild. dude. Way to go, hippos. <laughs> what? The descendants of four cocaine hippos from Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar's <laughs> private zoo have their eyes set on a new target, people. There have been reports of hippos invading a schoolyard, as well as terrorizing local fishing communities. Some residents required hospital care after ferocious attacks. Hey, isn't that like the, the animal that kills the most humans? I think so. It's, it's something like that. Many are now worried that the hippos, which have since multiplied to, population, to a population of nearly 170 in 40 years, will become an even bigger threat if they continue to reproduce at the same speed. They're talking by 2035, there could be a thousand hippos yeah. running around Colombia. And you see, they, they've already lost something like 85% of their marbles in oh, Colombia. Oh, stop it. It's time to snip those hippos. Stop it, Scott. <laughs> what? I thought... <laughs> Snippos. Uh, it took me a minute. I'm slow this hungry, morning. Hungry, hungry hippos? It. Yes. A great game. Stop it. Great game. <laughs> oh, man. People are dying. They're hungry. And that's also important. Oh, man. I yeah, mean, they're, they're crazy territorial, right? They're so cute. Uh, a local says they're very, very dangerous. Unpredictable. Aggressive. And that's not a way you want to go either. They crush it with like some, oh, you know, some, some crazy teeth. pressure. And then, yeah. yeah. What? Well, they said if a person, not a way. look up what to do if you encounter a hippo. Run. Yeah, man. Are they fast? One person said if you were to encounter one, it would probably be best to hide. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting on top of the hippo and riding, it, riding it into out? the sunset. Mm -hmm. The hippos at the zoo are so great because I don't think they're you could tame the beast. The land they go in the water too. You know they can swim underwater and they can be on land. Okay, if you encounter a hippo out in the world, you should dot dot dot. If a hippo opens its mouth to flash its teeth, flee immediately. Do they it, run fast? Uh, I'm I'll not find sure. Out. I do. If, if I if a hippo flashes its teeth, if you're in the water, move in the opposite direction of where you saw the hippos. Oh, so don't go towards it. Okay, good. <laughs> If you're good on land, 
If you're on land, find cover. You cannot outrun a hippo in a straight line. Yeah, they run 19 miles per hour. We run about 8 miles per hour. Oh, find a tree, man. a rock, a vehicle, something to get between you and the hippo. Avoid the path that shows clear signs of hippo grazing at night. Abandon camping anywhere near the area a hippo has waste or footprints. Try not to get between the hippo and any water. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Never do anything to startle a hippo ah. from upon close. So they don't eat meat. I wonder if you can get a spray where you just spray on, you know, like steaks or something. Yeah. If you know a hippo's in the area, avoid canoeing or kayaking in shallow lakes. They're so cute That's when they run That's a good thing. Now. I don't canoe or kayak, so. And then the, the last bullet point here is don't even think about going near the calves. They're so fat. They're so cute. And vicious. Vicious. Deadly. Vicious, unpredictable, aggressive. So Columbia, the government pledged millions of dollars on a plan to... to I guess do something with these things. There goes the Colombian paddleboard industry. They said it's a race against time. If left unchecked, a thousand by 2035. Jeez, dude. All from four. And think about the destruction of that. Since they're not native there, they're going to destroy. Oh, yeah. They're the saying it's, it's a permanent wow. uh, environmental and ecosystem impacts. You know, I've never had a desire to retire... A hippo, but I mean, if they have to hire us to come down, or that could be fun. I well, how about this? Cool you know, so the four there? hippos that were that were let go, three females, one very studly dude. Yeah, that a boy. And this guy is just. Oh, well, he's the Genghis going, Khan. Going to pound town. <laughs> yeah, the Genghis Khan going of South, to hippo pound town. Uh, <laughs> South American hippos. Oh man, and there was a, one was green, one was yellow, one was uh, orange, yeah. one was red. <laughs> Yeah, Chad says, basically, if you find yourself in a situation where a hippo is in your immediate vicinity and alerted to your presence, you're effed. Hmm. Yeah, and these things are just wandering around. Cocaine hippos. Look, <laughs> wow. he's got a video. Holy, holy, holy smokes, cow. they can cruise. In the water? Fast. And they run fast on land, too, right? Yeah, dude. These things are fast <clears throat> regardless. They run in the water. They don't swim. Oh, really? that's right. That is correct. Yeah, on the bottom there. They run on the bottom. That's why they're so fast. They're so heavy. They can... Somebody just said, I got one solution to our hippo problem. Bang, bang. Mm -hmm. I don't think a one round is going <laughs> to... Two rounds are going to take it down. Cool Punisher. That guy's got a Punisher sticker on his truck for sure. <laughs> yeah, I got a solution. You need a big gun. Bang, bang. Well, okay. Well, what if you're taking a dump in the middle of the safari and you don't have a gun? Well, you're going to... You're going to... Or do you want to hump this hippo? What does bang bang mean? Are you going to have sex with it? Maybe that's what he meant. He's like, I got well, a solution first, for this hippo. First, I'm going to try to rough talk it. And if that doesn't work, bang bang. Hmm. I'm going to flirt. Yeah, I'm riding it. Speaking of uh, big pieces of uh, artillery, you hear about the story about this, uh, this, uh, this neighbor who called the cops once he found out the guy living next door had a, uh, 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 a rocket capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Okay, well. <laughs> in his garage. Oh, you got your missile out, Dave. Cool. This is from the New York Post. An inactive and rusted rocket that once could have carried a nuclear warhead was found in the cluttered garage of a Washington homeowner who recently died. The discovery of the military-grade rocket sparked an urgent visit last Thursday from a local police bomb squad, which quickly determined the remnants of the missile were inert and not a danger to the surrounding area. This thing is big, by the way. Yeah, I'm imagining like a massive missile. Is that yeah. accurate? Like a whole garage? The police officials determined the hunk of metal was a Douglas Air II Genie, which is an unguided air-to-rocket, uh, air-to-air rocket that is meant to carry a 1.5 kiloton a kiloton w25 warhead dating back to the cold war so this guy had this thing in his garage mm -hmm. look this is what an air 2 genie is i mean this is like the missile on your transformers you know what i mean like this is the this is the 1980s cool looking right uh, yeah i mean this this is the one that you played with well, with your gi joe stuff so I guess the dude died. The neighbor came over and said, "Holy cow, there's a there's a missile in here." Mm -hmm. And then called the called the cops. Wow, that's crazy. Can you imagine if I stumbled upon this, I see ya. Goodbye. Now, how does it activate? I don't um, know. They said it was inert. It was it was not usable. Um Yeah, but even if you tell me that, 
Like, okay, have you ever seen like a, like a, I'm not sure what they're called, but like a deactivated grenade or like a, you know, hollowed out grenade? Oh, yeah. Anybody ever handed you like a real grenade? Like we went to a museum and seen one, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's, I don't think that, I don't like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like, like uh, I, I don't remember who had it, but somebody was like, "Here, here's a, here's a real grenade. It's like you know, deactivate or something else." And I was, and I was just like, I, "You know what? Take you know, this, I get... take, take this away." <laughs> no, I mean, what, why? What are we? What is this a toy now? What? Why are we playing with this? Well, thing? I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I you don't, know, I don't want to play core, with that. You know, the core taken out and the, all get the one elements life. to make it. I get explode. it. I get it. Mm-hmm. We get one life. I don't. I'm, I'm trying to mitigate any sort of. But that's one of my, you know, one of my bucket list items is to throw a grenade. Yeah, that's cool. Which even to just, I mean, to hold one is pretty badass. Yeah, they're fragile. Like, have you ever held, uh, like, uh, the tube of a rocket launcher? No. Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, you worked shot, on a base. Yeah, you've actually shot a rocket launcher. Yeah. The grenade training was interesting in the Army because it's like, there's a lot of, not disparaging, but... I think anyone that's been in the military will tell you that it's not always the cream of the crop coming through basic training. There's a couple guys that you're like, I don't know if I want him holding a loaded weapon around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're out there like, I kind of feel for the instructors because they have to like be around every single person holding a live grenade. Yeah, there's a ton of those videos of like, you know, somebody throwing the pin. People get nervous. (laughs) Throwing the pin and holding the grenade. Or just dropping it, just fumbling it. Like there's, there were a couple close calls. Oh my God. Because you stand a... You're far away from. You have to. We had like a grenade course where you had to run and like get down like behind the log and then throw it down range and try to hit like within a certain. So like there would be a drill instructor holding a live grenade that would hand it to you. You'd like run and you'd pull it. They're like yelling at you. It's like high. Mm-hmm. You know, you're simulating wartime right. circumstances. Very, very, <clears throat> very, very mild. But yeah. It was it was kind of fun. It was cool to like throw them and watch them explode and everything, and like shooting the fifty caliber was now imagine, that was fun. See, I don't know if it's just a guy thing, learn, but like we love shooting off fireworks. Mm-hmm. I would love to shoot a girls do cal. too. Um, so cool, it's fun. But even to like okay, so this guy's got a rocket. To even to press a button, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you could be a mile away, but knowing you press that button and something. Yeah, took yeah. off and blew something up mm-hmm. is cool as hell. I'd be yeah. more comfortable with a live grenade than somebody fiddling with one that supposedly isn't. Right. Because then nobody's fiddling. You, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine mm. around weapon, weaponry and all that kind of stuff. I just, like, it's not, it's not in any circumstance a plaything. You're looking for cause and effect. You're I mean, like, I, I, was, want I was raised around guns happen. and weapons and all this kind of stuff, but it was like the utmost respect for safety and just sure. like, it, it, like knowing... All of it. So none of it is fun to me. You know okay, what I mean? Well, it's, it's not a toy. Well, this brings me to my, my next point. Okay, so see if you could find a picture of the rocket that was in the guy's garage. I mean, it was clearly rusted out. Yeah, but what is the life expectancy? I don't know. I, you know, mm-hmm. so it was a rusted rocket. The rocket itself doesn't have an explosive, though. It's a it's delivery the, whatever system. The yeah. Right. So he didn't have the nuclear warhead. He just had the delivery system. But here's, the, here's my question. Okay, so Rafe... Yeah. You're at home. Uh, you find out that your neighbor has one of these rockets in his garage. Yeah, dude. Do you call it D-snitch? No, nah, man. What's America coming to if we can't have a nuclear warhead delivery <laughs> rocket in our freaking garage, man? Oh, like, Double tap. Yeah. Good Lord, dude. I like freedom. Don't you? You know, Do and you're you? dead. I am going to piggyback on what Rafe's saying. Like, that thing goes off, you're gone in a split second, so you're not going to know anything. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, this is a rusted out 1950s, you know, Cold War rocket. This seems like uh, an artifact more than a danger to me. It seems more <laughs> like a conversation piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a show piece. Yeah, yeah. You want to go straddle Dave's rocket? We're having a bonfire. I don't, <laughs> I, I'm not calling the cops in this situation. It doesn't, yeah, I wouldn't either. It doesn't look dangerous. It doesn't look... Uh, now, I don't know. They well, are if he was fighting. in there working on it. Right. <laughs> trying to get it running. It. Yeah. I might be like, hey, what's up with that, man? Like He's an old like, Camaro. What? <laughs> Nothing. Here I go again on my own. <laughs> like, why are you listening to White Snake working on your nuclear rocket, Dave? Don't worry about it, dude. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. Mumbling to yourself. Almost there. Almost yeah. there. Almost there. <laughs> Mumbling to know. yourself. They'll be sorry. They'll be sorry. 
Yeah, dad's out in the garage again <laughs> trying to restore the rocket. He's drinking a bush light. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. like in every yard in like Herculaneum, and I mean that with love. So. Look at this. I mean, it is a cartoon-looking missile. It's an old ass. It's pretty cool. But they are, you know, they are they are still fi like finding un, you know, uh, unexploded, you know, World War II artillery shells. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that are not duds. Or, not or, or disassembled, I, or, you know, whatever. I think this is like a, a Southern Illinois City Park thing, though. I mean, Rafe, do you remember the parks down in Southern Illinois all yeah. had a rocket, like, in... Yeah, that seems like oh, that would God. be the centerpiece right next to the monkey bars. Yeah. Those, yeah. those rocket ship playgrounds were the best. They right. The best. I mean, there's a park dangerous in... Dangerous awesome. There's a park in Edwardsville that's got, like, a fighter jet up on a... You know what I mean? Like a yeah. decommissioned... Yeah. To me, it's like a decommissioned thing that... But this is somebody's garage. Yeah, so what? I mean, it's a park as a public playground. <laughs> yeah, but the, children go. the city has come in and made sure that everything's safe. That's true, but... Like so does guy, Dave. Dale. We'll call him Dale. <laughs> oh, Dale's a better name, yeah. <laughs> Neighbor Dale has a what you hope is an, sh a showpiece. Yeah. <laughs> decommissioned, you know, Douglas Air 2 Genie. I I'm probably not calling the cops. Because no. then once you get the cops involved, that's the whole thing. What if they take it? What if they come and take it? It'd be sad. From Try my, to come and take Dale. it. Yeah, from his cold, dead fingers. <laughs> <laughs> He's just out there. Are you snitching? Learn, are you snitching? Hell no. I'm dating Dale. <laughs> yeah. A real situation. You find out your neighbor has one of these in I've, the... Honestly, I have lived next to worse like, than this. <laughs> That's interesting. So, okay. I remember definitely she, thought she'd Remember snitch. she lived next to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably Kim Jong-un for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was a rough, rough season. <laughs> rough season. We probably all live near somebody that has something like this. Trust me, there's worse War things going on at your neighbor's house Man, than this. You, yeah, you'd be surprised what people got away with in the 50s, 60s, Oh, my and gosh. My old neighbor had the cops at his house all the time doing God knows what. Yeah. So. I knew a guy with a bazooka that worked in Southern <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> That's sweet. And he was saving it for a rainy day. For a fun day. Yeah. Get out of here. I had a neighbor who, he went down in his basement and he was had all of his guns and the cops had to gas him out. And he came out on a stretcher because he was losing his damn mind. So, oh. Tell you, man, I feel more comfortable Where was with, that? with the people with the real stuff. That, that was know in what uh, doing Valley Park. Than the people that are messing around playing with the fake stuff. Hmm. You had a neighbor out a bazooka? <laughs> I wasn't a neighbor, just a guy I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you get down into the... Uh, you get down to that coal mine country, dude. There's a lot of people minding their own business. And that's okay. I had a, I mean, everybody, I feel like where I grew up, you knew like at least one guy who was an avid weapons collector who was, maybe not everything in his collection was above board. Right. Yeah. 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 It was a firearm. So I got two claymores. Enth yeah. Uh, enthusiast. Yeah. Yeah. And people sneak stuff back, too, man. It's hard. I mean, they keep good tabs on it, but there's lots of... There's all kinds of artifacts from World War One, Two, Vietnam, floating around out there. Yeah, again, you know, we see stories all the time of unexploded, you know, artillery shells that are found in... You know, Grandpa passed away, and it's been up in the attic, and where, you know, the grandkids yeah. are going through stuff. And mm -hmm. holy cow, I th probably need to call somebody on this. My dad was in... Vietnam, and uh, I want to say, I, this might be a false memory, but in his gun cabinet that was huge, you know, I was never allowed to go over there and touch anything or look at it or anything, but I, I think he had a grenade in there. I don't know if it was like a real one Just or a case. fake one or one that was a shell. I don't know, but I this vaguely our, remember this. This is our insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was Dale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a couple situations. Okay, now think. Think about this. Think. Think about calling the police. Okay. Are you going to snitch on these people? I'm going to I'm going to give you a situation. Are you going to snitch? Snitches get stitches, Riz. You see a waiter pick something off the floor and put it in somebody's plate. Are you saying something? I'm saying something to the person. Yeah. I'm not going to call the cops. I'm not going to call the cops, but what, how are you going to handle that? I'm going to go, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's what I'm How gonna are you say. handling that? Oh, you're going to say something to the waiter. Yeah, I'm going to go, what are you doing? Call him out. You're going to say something to the waiter? You're going to say something to the guy who could have potentially eaten with, eaten, what, eaten with that? Yeah. And the, what if the waiter goes, five-second rule? Whomever is closest to me is who I'm talking to. Hmm. Yeah, what if the guy's like, mind your own business? I mean, the guy's already done something nasty. What's he care what you think? I'm going to go, mind my own business. Yeah, the waiter goes, what, mind your own business. Yeah, mind my your, brows are going to go mind up. Mind your own business.
Get out of here. I'm going to go, let me see your manager. I am the manager. My voice is going to get low and slow. Ooh. I am the, the eyebrows manager. are up. First of all, as a Yelper, one star. <laughs> mm -hmm. One star review. <laughs> one star, and I will write about this in my review. Are you going to say something to the guy? So the waiter goes, mind your own business. There you go. Are you going to say something to the guy who could potentially? Yes. I'm yeah. going to go watch me wa mind my own business right now. I'm going to walk Ooh. over and tell, I'm going to get the plate. I'm, we're going okay. to a different restaurant. It's a, it's a bigger place. It's a bigger place. <laughs> the guy, the waiter drops it at, you're sitting near the kitchen. He drops, right, right, right. He drops something and now you don't know what table he's going to go. Yeah, to. You, right. don't, you don't know. So you, just, you don't know who, who the recipient is. Right. So it's now or, ne or never. Well, is he going to the kitchen? You say I'm going to watch him. He comes out of the kitchen. He drops something. Uh -huh. He drops a, a piece of chip, like a curly fry. A, a curly fry. Not a curly fry. A chicken oh, finger. You, oh, the whole entree. He drops, like a, the steak a, or whatever. A chicken, a piece of chicken off the plate. Okay. Okay. You're ready. Chicken. Quickly Focus picks down it on up. His chicken. Okay. Well, how do you and know? You go, and you go, hey, and he goes, mind your own business, and then he walks into the other part of the restaurant. Are you following? Yes. Him? Yeah. I'm on his ass. A little five foot I can, three. I can imagine you, you you turn the corner, and you're you're watching him, and you're doing this. The, yeah. You know the pointing at your eyes, pointing at the him. The De Niro. Pointing at like, my eyes, pointing at him. Like, don't you dare! Don't you do it! Would <laughs> you finish eating your food that's on the table because of the possibility of this happened to you? Now you now, but now you have to get up and you got to now follow him. Right. Are yeah. you doing that? Are yes. You going that yeah, far? I would because this is I am. not right. Ray, are you are you going that far? What to follow him in the kitchen? No, not in the Follow kitchen. He's already the out of the room. kitchen. To the table. To, yeah, the, to table. the table. Room. I am. And then I'm, and when he puts the plate down, I pick it up and I go, sir, you're not going to want to eat this. This just fell on the ground. Don't worry, I'm on it. He's going, who the hell are you? I'm, I'm, I'm the dinner fairy. <laughs> yes. Make sure I, I save your life. I'd probably just slap the plate out of his hand and escalate the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be like, oh, what kind of, is that chicken a la king? Pow! Pow! And then when it hit the ground, I'd be like, I'll pick it up. And then i get kicked out of that apple. Uh-huh. All right. Again. Justice is served. Justice you, is a dish best not served. You know your neighbor's stealing power from another neighbor. <laughs> I'm going to be calling him up going, how you doing that? What, how are we handling this situation? <laughs> like cable? Which neighbor do I like better? Mm. <laughs> your neighbor's stealing power from another neighbor. Man, I'm probably staying out of that one. You staying out of that one? I'm staying out of that one. Uh, I'm not a snitch. I had a crackhead neighbor that used to come, like, she'd forget to pay her electric bill, and she'd come over with an, she'd just knock on my door in my apartment with an extension cord and be like, hey, you care, uh, if, I, care if I plug in? I, uh, and I Care just, if I juice up? She's like, I'll clean your house. And I was like, all right, whatever, Debbie, plug in. Shout out to Debbie. I hope you're, oh, shout out to Debbie. Hope, yeah. you, hope you kicked your habit and you're, you're living your best life. You, are you getting involved, Learn? No. That's cool. People that figure out how to rewire like cable to their home in the 90s, that's even, cool as hell. It's not even just a, you, you use mm. an extension cord. Like theft, they're stealing theft, from me? Theft is cool. When from it's... you, no. No, it's not me. It's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm getting involved. <laughs> I'm assuming if an extension cord's plugged into the neighbor's house, the neighbor's aware of it. But you know they're not. Well, yeah, I'd probably say something to the neighbor, maybe. Again, my... Old neighbor in Maplewood used to come over and use my hose. So stealing our water from, because our the spout without was on permission? that. Without permission. I came home from work one day, and uh, and he was just straight up watering his grass with my water. <laughs> and I was wow. like, what are we doing something? here? Yeah, I was like, uh, can I help you with this? What that was my say? problem. And he was like, oh. Uh, and he was very embarrassed. He's an old man. Ah. I wasn't too mad. I was more honestly. I was more mad that he would urinate in his backyard in broad daylight rather than use my hose. Well, that's how he was originally watering his right. lawn, and then you had a problem with that, so he borrowed yeah. your water. Now you yeah. got a problem with that. Can't what make do her you happy. want? Can't Can I do happy. anything right in this neighborhood? <laughs> I'm going to my garage to work on my rocket. <laughs> Scott, are you uh, are you getting involved in the? Uh... If there, I would. Um, I would probably do the thing where I go and unplug it from the neighbor they're stealing from. Like in the middle of the night, I would do that, put it on their porch, so that way when they wake up in the morning, like, oh, the neighbor caught me. And oh, then you no one has to And then that way, quietly. yeah, you just do it where no one gets mad at each other and the other yeah, person never what knows. Happens. They never say anything. You got up in the middle of the night, you do that, then the lights go on and you're the one holding the cord. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, I didn't do it. <laughs> 
All right, now, would you say something if you know your boss, your direct boss, is stealing from the company? If you know your boss, hmm. your direct boss, is stealing from the company. In this, in this industry, probably not. I wouldn't say a word. G general office job, whatever. Nah. They'll find out soon enough. Or will you be the hero? No. You're, no good comes of that. What, are they going to give me his snitching? job? Yeah, I kind of agree with you. Are you snitching? Are you going up the chain? No. They'll find out. See, in my mind, I, I'm thinking, how far up does this go? Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Is this a next level or is this, you know, a bunch of levels above my boss? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. You, it's, it's, Riz is out here going, is everybody stealing except for me? It could be. <laughs> it could be. Rafe, you saying something? Uh, what are they stealing? Money? money. Office supplies? Money. Stealing money. So you're a direct know. boss. You work for a corporation. You oh. find out your direct boss, your manager, the one you report to is stealing. You know for a fact. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe it's keeping your pay down. Mm -hmm. This company can't, it just can't, they can't figure out how to make money. We keep like losing you love, money. You love your job. So we're just you, not, you make so good money. So we're just not going to pay, pay Riz all that much. Like you make good money. It, whatever you're making is supporting your family. You live a decent lifestyle. It's like office space. Are you gonna Are you gonna go to his boss and say, "Hey, man, I know what's going on." I Isn't that. the honorable thing to do is blackmail? <laughs> yeah. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Anonymous tip. <laughs> Get a piece of it. Maybe I'd make one of those ransom letters, and be like, "So and so is stealing from the company," so they would never know who actually did rat him out. Or, but yes. what if you find Good out point, that Scott, everyone's has to be stealing cut in. except for you, so mm -hmm. then they know it's you. And then I'm like, "Why am I not stealing?" It has to be cut in. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good plan. Boom, hmm. and you won't get fired. All right, different situation. All right, you're at home. So all of a sudden, King Scott is coming to uh, just money. Nice, congrats, Scott's buddy. coming to money. Thank you. He, he told everybody he uh, had an aunt that died and left you, left you a good amount of money. Yep. R.I.P. You know, King Scott's got a new f fancy chain. He's driving a new car. But you're at home and you see a bank has been robbed. And there is a... Red-haired man. A, a, a somewhat... <laughs> so, there's a somewhat description of the, of the perp, and you know it's King Scott. Real wholesome guy, great hair, <laughs> sweet demeanor. <laughs> with a mask, ski like mask you know, on. Like, you know it's King Scott. I had a hat and sunglasses on. I don't know how they ever figured out. <laughs> Your hair is poking out. How did it go down? They just robbed a bank? He it's just, a, it's he, a non-violent... Okay, so it's that, a non. I, I know that sounds silly, but that matters. Yeah, <laughs> to stretch no, out it. it's a non. It's a, a non-violent yeah. robbery. Because I, I love you, but like I care about my community. If you and if, and if you possibly could do something to harm somebody else, it wasn't a shootout. It was. Okay. It was just, you slide the note. <laughs> he to, slides a note. Give me the monies and. Yeah. I know, I know that sounds silly, but the details matter. He had a whole, he had a stretch Armstrong like in Detroit Rock mm -hmm. City how they robbed the convenience store. You had that in like a hoodie, and so it looked like the head of the stretch Armstrong looked like a gunpoint, you know. That's and you said awesome. please in your note. It's like, will you please give me a million dollars? Yeah, you got you you made off with with four hundred fifty grand. I don't random. No, it was three hundred seventy. I mean, yes, four hundred fifty grand. Random number. Very. I'm trying to be realistic here. Cool. Thank you for. <clears throat> Thanks for putting I'm me I'm painting a picture. Yeah, yeah, I know. Nice. I wasn't there, and now I'm there. Now I'm in the bank. Okay, so now you know it's King Scott. I know it's King Scott. Non-violent, but the clerk's in therapy. Uh, Let's add an element. The clerk's in therapy because she was traumatized. Traumatized. Oh. She, she might be know. getting free therapy. And her name's Betty, and she's like just now retiring. Like This is her retirement she's year. She's your aunt. No. Not your favorite aunt, but you are blood-related. No, you can't... <laughs> This is my situation. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, man. I thought we were. I thought we were collaborating, no. creating a scenario Are together. Are you calling the cops on King? No. Nah. Yeah. I'll take you guys out for nah. lunch. It's too close. Too close to the vest. Too. He's in my. Uh, he's in my. He's in inner your circle. circle. Mm -hmm. You calling the cops? No. I told you yesterday when we were talking about you running to Mexico and how I would, if I, it were me, I would hit up my friend who was my ride or die and. Yeah. Scott's my ride or die, so That's I'm right. not ratting him out. He's a good person. He didn't even have a gun. He said, please, in his note. He deserves that yeah. money. I mean, it was, I had, I had it was a possible gun. 
Like, you don't know. Like, uh, the gun was not flashed. Uh, I want him to have that money and Thank live you. a good life. Thank you. Because he'll do more good with that money than the bank will. Hey, we've we've learned that she's totally okay with theft. <laughs> you calling the cops on King Scott? No, if I think it's not violent, I don't. I want no part of this. I, I just keep me out of this. But the note said, you know, if you get, if you don't give me money, I'm gonna shoot off the place. Oh, that's different. That's different. Signed. He never, that's what his note said. He signed it, Moon Valjean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Signed M Valjean. Oh, hey, dude, it seems no. like you kind of tried to throw me under the bus, like, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, dude. No. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I would tell you I know. Ooh, would I, though? Nah. Because I would think. I'd kill you. Man, I thought I knew King Scott. I guess I don't. Yeah, if I guess. I let I him know. Know I, if I let him know I know, is he going to. Who knows? Yeah, Try Thanksgiving. Take I, me out. Yesterday, you told all of us okay? that you had our backs. Are you lying to us right now? No, I'm. I'm. You're, I'm. I'm saying, do <laughs> I tell him that I know? Oh. Mm. Or is this we leave this unsaid? Unsaid. Enjoy and would you, Christmas. since I'm a part of your show and attached to you, would you go ahead and like in private say, "Hey, you need to leave the show." Like, what would you do in that situation? Like if you knew rich. we were doing something like that, and it's like, well, now my name's attached to yours, and this could go down really bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no. I think I would have to let you know that I know. Okay. You're like, can you invest that in my farm, please? <laughs> would you let him know that you know? One day, on my deathbed, I'd write him a note. <laughs> and I'd say, buddy, I knew this whole time, and I loved you anyway. Hmm. I'd you. let him know, because I want a little peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll keep quiet for ten percent. Yeah. That's the right way. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be, I would come into your little cubicle in there with some like, I'd be like, hey, did you see this on the news? What are the odds? Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> Whoa, that look. And I would just uh, <laughs> slide him a little. I'd slide him a little like blurry bank uh, camera still shot because for some reason that's the only non four K camera is the most important one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Banks haven't, they're not ready to upgrade. I can pay, uh, you know, I can order something from Australia on my phone, but the you'd banks say, can't. Uh, you say, tell they, me something. Yeah. Does this look just oh, no. like hmm. you? You know what's crazy? Yeah. I got a buddy that does photo enhancement. <laughs> I don't have any reason to, but this kind of looks like you. No, you'd say, this guy, have you seen that story about the guy that robbed the bank? This, the guy that looks, it looks familiar. Do you know? Mm. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah, look at this that looks like this Catherine O'Hara. Do we work with this person? <laughs> Life's crazy, God, I just man. Can't, I can't put my finger on who this looks like. All right, well, the only thing that would be on. crazier than this being you is if $50,000 in unmarked bills were in my <laughs> mailbox tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I know that won't happen. <laughs> well, Savage. we'll see. You know, it's nice to know that we all have each other's backs. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not you guys. calling the cops on any of you. Nah. Thanks, buddy. You can have it a rocket, me, rob a bank. I don't care. It won't take 25 grand to silence me. I'll just, just so you know, that's yeah. a small price. And you guys are lucky because I couldn't afford a phone with a nine on it. So, hey, we're good. That's my price. Uh, Super Bowl is on Sunday. I'm second guessing now going to this party. By the way, what? With your big sandwich, what? You made you're not coming over to my house. What's wrong with you? Why? I don't know. So I, I, if you missed the show yesterday, I, I'm, I was invited. The family was invited to a Super Bowl party on Sunday. And a big one with like 50 yeah, folks. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go anymore. I was on my way into work. And I'm like. Hey, man, you can come on over to my place. It's it's, and, and the good thing, it's not far from my house. Yeah. You're second guessing your dish that you're going to bring? No, I'm going to bring a big sandwich. Too many okay. people? No, it's, you know, it's a work <laughs> night. Oh, come on. Well, you know, we're not going late. Why don't you come over to my place, man? No, I'm definitely not. If I'm not going to this place, I'm definitely not going over to your place. Why? What? what, what, what you live what, far away. You, what, you live. What makes mine worse? That you 40 are minutes further. away from me. 40 minutes? Get on out. 30 minutes. If, 25 I drive minutes very slow. If you're slow. <laughs> <laughs> Back roads. Come on, man. It's a good time. You live 40 minutes. All right. 15 minutes. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's St. Louis, man. I know. I don't know. I, I, you know. I really have no no skin in the game here as far as the game goes. We're supporting Rafe. Yeah, you piece of crap. I'm being honest with you. I don't really care who wins. What? Whoa. Oh, my God. No. Cool. <clears throat> this I is not the way. Can't. Well, that's how I feel about your son's hockey Believe tournament. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. The wheels are off. Fine. You he just did that. You. you just did that to your own son. 
Why don't you care about this game? This is the closest to an NFL team that St. Louis has, is the Chiefs. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, like, Tim- I, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for a good game. Right. Yeah. What I, I would, okay, I would like to see the Chiefs win. It would be a great story. Why was that so hard to say out but loud? It, but if they don't win, I'm not going to be upset. Okay, I'm going to go, fair. okay, it was a good game. Yeah. But you want them to win. I want. I don't want to blow out uh, I, Brock Purdy, the quarterback for the Niners. That's a good story, too. Oh, and Mr. Nope. Irrelevant, last person picked in the draft. Yeah. Like, that's a nice story. Surrounded by millions of dollars of weapons. I have Christian McCaffrey on my fantasy team. Oh, well, then you do oh, have skin the, in the game. Yeah. That's over. Like yeah. it, it is over uh, as far as me winning goes. Uh, but I still do have him as a t- quote-unquote teammate. I have all, all skin in this game because my husband is a diehard Chiefs fan. Your husband's a chi- Chiefs fan. Moon's a Chiefs fan. Rave's a Chiefs fan. Scott? All my faves love yeah, the Chiefs. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm going to go with Chiefs, um, I think, because I've... Anybody Once the got, Rams left, I kind of I was like, up I'm up in the air. I just want to enjoy it all. And uh, so, But the Chiefs, I think, are my top pick. I also would go with the, the Broncos or Dolphins. If they I don't grew up win, a Giants fan. If they don't win, my home life and my work life are going to be hell for the next uh, week. Yeah. Okay. So anybody got money on it? Tim got money on it? I don't know if he's got money on it, but you he's guys? fully invested. Anybody, anybody? I will probably have money. Yeah. More importantly, really? my heart is on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nobody cares about hearts. Money? I care I, about how much, how, much, how much money you got, Rock? You think I should double my four hundred fifty grand? Uh. <laughs> he robbed it just in case. Uh, just, just in time to put a Super Bowl bet. He's doing another coin toss, or how how many minutes Taylor Swift? Uh, Johnny be says, "Listen, the Pickham Challenge has made me very bitter and ambivalent." I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm not a huge chief. I would like. To, we've been to Chiefs games. <coughs> Every year, I root you guys for, the, chief, I root for yeah. the Chiefs when we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. It's okay, no it's deal. a Missouri team. I'm, I just don't have the passion. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That's why you need to go to the party. You'll get I more would into go it. to the party because I would watch the game. I, I'm, I like watching football. Come to my house, just me and you, and watch me scream at my TV for. See, four I don't want to do that. And sleep over at Rafe's. Yeah. Have a. Sleepover. I don't want to do that. My house is gonna be pretty chill. Everybody Boys' just, night. Everybody's just gonna be hanging and eating basically, and then uh, me and my son-in-law will probably be the only ones actually watching. What kind of, are you going to, is it going to be all like vegan snacks and stuff? What's wrong with you, man? There's I'm no, asking. There's, there's, there's no, 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 one, no, no one is vegan in my house. No one. Even my vegetarian daughter has, has gone the other way now. It's, <laughs> no, it's a legit question. No. What kind of snacks? Because Super Bowl for me We're doing all is about of stuff. grazing. Well, so <laughs> my, my daughter, who's now not a vegetarian, has requested Wingstop, which we approved. So, okay. so we'll have that. We'll have uh, some, uh, some uh, buffalo dip that my wife makes. There will be... Yes, there will be some vegetables, uh, but they're all going to be great. And then we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a giant charcuterie type vibe. Hey, you can like vegetables and still yeah, be a man. I'm, I'm just so here strange. to say, like, I know that you get the screw no. you hippie button out whenever I'm talking about my vegan snacks and no, stuff. No, 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 no. You can have great skin and hair and look amazing okay, and but still not be on a Super man. Bowl Sunday. It's just food, you goof. Not on Super Bowl You're right. Sunday is a, is a holiday. Okay, does that I mean I can eating. have chicken? It will be very traditional. Yeah. Very traditional. I don't care what you do. I can take a break from my chicken for I don't a year. care what you You can do whatever yeah, you want. For I'm sure. talking about me. Does it count against what my What is the spread going to be like? No. Wonderful. Am I going to bring a big sandwich and I'm just yeah. going to eat the big sandwich? <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> you ate two feet of your own... Yeah. Food. This dude cleared three feet of his 10-foot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and his shirt came off. And he was really weird. <laughs> mumbling about the cauliflower. How sandwich do you think you could eat? Honestly. I think I could eat five feet. <laughs> five feet? Oh. I could do two. That's about it. I Hard eat, salami uh, on it. Over the entire course of a four-hour game, I bet I could I could house, if that was all I was eating, I could easily eat half of a 10-foot sandwich. Can I sandwich. tell you what's going to I mean, I wouldn't feel good. I'm not going to order it. I'm making it, by the way. I've decided to make it. Out of what bread? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, are you making the bread? No, I'm not going to make the bread. No, you know, Schnooks the Bakery has some great, like, French bread. Sure. Like, long French bread. He's yeah. going to get an arc welder. <laughs> How many? Weld together little pieces of white bread. Just I could do, like, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's not going to be huge. You're going to do? I'll do, I'll maybe bring, like, two or three of those. Okay. Like, the big, long French bread. That's not a 10-foot sandwich then, dude. Okay, well... If you lay them end to end, it'll be nine foot, okay? Well, wow. That's a girthy sandwich. That's uh, not as cool. 
That's not as cool as bringing in like a big torpedo. I know. Like that rocket. I, I've, I think I've waited too long. Where do you even go to get one of those? Where can you get a 10 foot, a legit Usually an 10 Italian foot? Italian deli. Yeah. And they'll just cook the bread, bake the bread. Yeah, they'll get like a special baker to. to What's do the it. sweet bread bakery in town that everybody loves? The sandwich shop God. has a sweet Let bread. Let me lay my sandwich out for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, First layer is going to be provolone. Okay. okay. Provolone. Provolone cheese. And then we're going to do, uh, we'll probably do like a, we'll probably do ham. Like maybe like a Virginia ham. Okay. Uh, then we'll do like a salami or, yeah, I think we'll do salami next. And then we'll do a mortadella. Uh, then we'll do a capicola. Prosciutto? Uh, I don't think so. So good. Though. I don't think so. So it's, delicate. It's, yeah, it, it may be a little too salty and too stringy for our purposes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those meats that when you cut the piece of the sandwich and you pull, it pulls out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it pulls a whole bunch of ingredients out of the other Trust part of me, the I've sandwich of you this. don't want. You're right. All right, sorry, I interrupted. Keep going. So we got probably three or four meats, provolone cheese. Then we'll do shredded lead. Nice. Shredded, not whole. Iceberg. Not whole pieces. Mm -hmm. Very it's important. It's got to be shredded. Because you know what happens when you bite on a piece of whole lettuce? Pull. And it'll sometimes just pull out. Same yeah, thing. It's a carpet. It's a prosciutto mm -hmm. effect. Yeah. It'll pull out. So you got to shred. And then we'll do some tomatoes, sliced thin. Yes. But they cannot overlap. The tomatoes cannot Love overlap. It. How big are the tomatoes? Beefer. Beef tomatoes, right? Big old thick guys. I say like Roma? Half, no, half, not like cherry tomatoes or anything. Not the, cherries. I'm talking about not a the, big beef steak. It, it. I don't think the size matters. To be honest with you. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, well, it doesn't but matter. But the or the tomato matters. Rules yeah. is rules, but size don't matter. It doesn't matter. What How kind, thick is but the, the bread? The tomato matters, right? Well, the bread is like this. You know, like it's this Italian. Thick. It's a, like a good like French bread. For French bread. Snooks. Okay. Hard. Yeah. Those are hard breads. I think you need a softer bread. No. You make your own sandwich. I'm telling you how this sandwich is constructed. <laughs> All right. And by the way, you have to you have to take out some of the some of the bread inside. You got to kind of like oh, boat yeah. it out a little bit. Got to make it like a boat. So do tomato. Okay. Uh, we may do red onion, like very thin. I'm out. Very Polarizing. Thin. Nobody's gonna want to eat this sandwich. That's not true. Everybody's gonna want to eat the sandwich. Yeah. Now you have to make sure you salt and pepper everything. You got to salt and pepper the top. Got a season. Really? And then we'll do oil and vinegar. It's a risk. Then we're going to close that. No, not a risk. Sog, sog ass. <laughs> it's not because the bread is crusty. That's a good point. All right, overruled. If you have a soft bread, everything falls apart. Everything gets too wet. If you have a good crusty bread, you're good. What about mayo? Oh, you hate no, mayo. I don't like mayo. What condiments you put on it then? Nothing? Mustard? No, I told you. Salt and vinegar. Uh, oil and vinegar. It's not a condiment. Yes, it is. Not you make like me. a vinaigrette. I know what you're saying. With a salad? Yeah. With a I mean, good crusty it's bread. Dang. Mustard is vinegar. Cool, man. I think you should do we a could stone do, ground okay, mustard. Okay, fine. We could do stone ground mustard on the side and you could customize. Love it. Whoa. That's the move right you there. You could customize. Okay. Are, you, are you allowed to have hot sauce anywhere near this? Why, why would you put hot sauce on it? Because it's a sandwich and it's yummy. Why would you put hot It's a cold well, sandwich. Because you just said the words you can customize sauce. as you wish. Yeah. There will be no hot sauce. So it's not a good sandwich. Go on. Get out of here. But there are hot wings, Scott. Hot wing dip. You can customize and it that's as I wish. How you make a sandwich? We are going to have a risotto show cookbook someday. <laughs> Actually, a great idea. It's going to have. It's going to yell at you. Every recipe in the middle of the recipe will just <laughs> have an can't do. argument <laughs> transcribed. <laughs> that's what I mean. The and end you'll of get everyone. to like you'll get to the third ingredient, and then there'll be just an argument transcribed for four pages, and yeah, then yeah. the next ingredient. The do not list. You pick your will pleasure. Be much bigger than the ingredient list. You can Mundini one version of it, and Rafe one version mm. of it. <laughs> well, should Monday be a, be a holiday? Yes. It should at least be something like a soft holiday. You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe you don't make it official, but it would just be cool if everybody was cool about it. Because in the back of my head, okay, so the game starts at five thirty. Five. But it, but it's five like pregame and and stuff like so when is kickoff? Yeah, what's kickoff? I think when that, is kickoff? I thought it was five thirty, but I, I think kickoff is five thirty. Yeah. Coverage the game ain't gonna end now. 
the game is not going to end until 9. Right? 9 o'clock. And if I'm at somebody else's house, it's, okay, let's gather the kids. Mm -hmm. Get in the car. Well, let's say bye to everybody. Got to say goodbye to everybody. But when all said and done, it's it's 9.45. Mm -hmm. And then you're just tired on Monday. Yeah, I don't like being tired. You know, maybe companies should do, like, some sort of party or something. Provide a party. What, what do you mean? Provide a Super Bowl party? Yeah, maybe maybe not provide it, but like, you know, organize it or something like that. And then everybody kind of has an option to go. And if you go, then you're off on Monday. I feel like spending more time with um, people you You're right. With. You're right. Uh, I just wish they'd provide us with a, hey, if you guys want to take the day, that's all good. Uh -huh. It won't yeah. count against you. Yeah, soft holiday. doesn't need to be, you know, some, some sort of sanctioned thing or whatever, but it be like, nice. I'm sure a lot of people have already requested Monday off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest Call sick days. days, too. You know, like, so Monday, I'm sure, will be, uh, you know, not a lot of productivity Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be here. I'm probably going to go to this party. Oh, I hope you do. We need oh, to goodness. know what happens there. <laughs> and I don't leave early. I'm not a leave early guy, especially when it comes to, like, a sporting event. Hmm. I don't know. You know, a lot of, in some countries, like the day after the World Cup, you know, most workers take the day off. Yeah, you know, do you think football is as big here as soccer is elsewhere, or perhaps even bigger? Super Bowl Sunday is pretty big, man. It is pretty much an, a holiday. I've always argued that I think we should let's kick. I don't know which one, but I think we could kick one of these Monday holidays over to the Monday after the Super Bowl. Just roll it all in, you know. You're saying like full bank bank holiday, right? every, everything. Yeah, just do it. Just make Monday a day of rest and respite. I don't think I don't think you could be you can make it official. I mean, it's got to be something like Kashmir Pulaski Day. We can just move it. Yeah. Um, here's some national holidays on that. One is National Braden Day for Bradens out there. Cool. Maybe that's something. All right. Yeah. There's we don't get National Braden, Braden Day off, so we can't move that. Yeah. Um, what about National Lost Penny Day? We could start a petition. Man, this is all I'm important. sure that's been done before. <gasps> yeah, Learned. that's been kicked up. You know, Has there's it? been change.org. Here's why we got to do this, and this will get us Monday off. Okay. National Poop Day. What is that? <laughs> I love that you signal to me like. There Larry, we go. Yeah. It's your day. <laughs> it's your day. This Wa is awesome. Washington's birthday is the third Monday in February. Just move it. Just move it. He's dead. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. We celebrate Washington's birthday early. That's President's a, Day, that's a right? victimless crime. Yeah, I think it's President's What's Day. What's more Just American than Super Bowl? Super Bowl President. Sunday and President's Day. Roll those two together, and, dude, I'm pretty sure B Bob Seger will just appear. Country morale will go up. Slippery and slope. And the president, our, our founding fathers would have wanted it. Slippery slope. Yes. I yes. agree. What's the next industry and business that's going to be basically be able to buy themselves into a holiday? Slippery Amazon slope. Amazon Prime Day. Slip yeah, I exactly. want that day off. Slippery slope. <laughs> You're talking bad. Yes, now we're talking NFL. You're talking NFL, mixing which is, uh, the government is, with the business. Yeah, the last thing we want is a holiday based on spending money and commerce to be a... Yeah. Thank God we have Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I can see true. where you're coming from, Moon. But reality is reality. Times yep. have changed. It's going to be, you know, uh, how many people watch Super Bowl? 65, 70 million? What's the, what's the, uh, the ratings usually? What was the last ratings for the Super Bowl? Half the country. How many millions of people watched last Five stars? How many millions of people watched last? Uh, it says 115 million. 115 million. <sighs> Which was uh, up from 99 million in 2020. 115 million of a country that's what? 300, 300 that's million? A third of the country. 350 million? What's our, what's our population now? 350 million? 300 and some change, yeah. Yeah, man, a third of the country. It's a lot. Or, Danny suggests, NFL moved the Super Bowl to Saturday. I'm down with that, too. That has been suggested yeah. before, too, and I would be all right with... I would be okay with that. Yeah, and why not? That sounds great. I mean, they already got two weeks, like a week off. Yeah, you're only moving it up. You're yeah. only moving it up a day. It's not like the guys are not going to be rested. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they would actually increase their viewership if they did that. Moved it to Saturday. Well, then you got the guys, Super Bowl's always on Sunday. Well, time's I don't know. Well, could no, go either way. People talking about work. Could go either way. People... Also, it could be like, because it's on Sunday, you might get passive viewers you don't normally get who wouldn't give up a Saturday night. But guys like Riz wouldn't be saying what guys like Riz are saying right now. God, I don't know if I'm going to go to the party. Isn't the Pro Bowl on a Saturday? Nobody watches that anymore. But that yeah, was last Saturday, right? Isn't that done? 
I it, it was, that's uh, flag football. <clears throat> Oh. They do a flag football. It's terrible. It's terrible. Well, I'm just saying they already do a game that is yeah. similar to the game that we're talking about on a Saturday. Mm. I don't know. But you know what? i tell you what, Rafe. Yes. Because I, I look at Super Bowl as an eating holiday mm-hmm. or an eating. You know, I, I do look forward to the Super Bowl snacks. And that's why. Yeah, this is like pre-Easter. This, right, is, this I, is pre-Easter. If I stay home. And we've stayed home the past couple of years. Remember, we used, to, we used to have big blowouts at the, yeah. at the brewery, which were great. Awesome. Because the spread was great. The food was amazing. Yep. Yeah. I, I looked forward to those pretzels for like six pretzels weeks were before great. we got there. The Shoot. past couple of years, I've been home with the kids and the wife, and I've made a whole bunch of food, and we sat you know, in the living room. It's, it's been fun. We did our own thing. Um, I do have some bad news, Rafe, as far <sighs> as Super Bowl snacks go. Why? For you. I'm leaving. Sit down. I'm leaving. You're going to need to sit down. Super Bowl Sunday is trash <laughs> Thanksgiving. That's what it is. It's trashy Thanksgiving. You get to eat all the trashy food you yes. like. And yeah. That's, I love it. Me too. I'm here for it. Me too. So don't ruin this for me. Uh, and we're going to go over this after the break. The 10 Super Bowl foods that bring good luck and bad luck. That sounds made up, but all right. No, nope, no, nope, this is Bible here. Did that where did that come this from? Is, this is this is coming. Did that come from the Pope? It. it came from a reputable source, Rafe. It came from the Vatican. Now, if you com. want your Chiefs to win, all right, I'll, I'll tell you the foods to avoid. Okay. Okay. And we'll we'll chop it up after. I the actually break. will probably do that. All right, today's team of the day is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill, St. Louis is home. For Blues Hockey from Arnold, Missouri, Danny Clegus is yeah, out. Danny. Uh, Danny has been a listener of the Riz Show for the past 10 years, is a faithful podcast weirdo. He has converted both his wife and two-year-old twins, two-year-old, into Riz Vangelis. Uh, he's looking forward to rocking a super sweet Team Riz soccer jersey with pride while repping the best morning show everywhere he goes. Loves everybody's favorite segments of Friday Fails, Headline Goo. Also loves the additions of both Learn and Rafe in the last year. Is thankful the show keeps Jeff's spirit alive with every show. Danny Clegg is from Arnold, is our Team Riz member of the day. It's super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. All right, so we'll do this uh, good luck and bad luck foods for your Super Bowl, and then we'll get into news. It is 7-13. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather. First look. Moon coming out. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. It's time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We have delays 270 eastbound between 44 and Manchester. Average speed about 35 miles an hour. Expect that. Your point forecast, partly cloudy. High of 55. Right now it's 32 at the point studio. 314-624-1037. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz the Socials at R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails. Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com. Crap on celebrities coming up. Porno birthday. We got some news. Uh, we're also going to take a new game out for a spin today. Really? Right. New game alert. New game warning. New game warning. We'll give away some fabulous prizes, including tickets for Riz Show Live. We got tickets to go see Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper. We got Point Fest tickets, and we have Dropkick Murphy tickets. Ray, for a preview, what are we going to call the game? Well, that's up in the air. That's kind of up to uh, one of our members. We're gonna either, we can either call it, Are You Smarter Than King Scott? Oh, no. Or mm-hmm. Are You Dumber Than King Scott? It's up to you, Scott. <sighs> Well, I think uh, it's a King Scott game. Yeah, it it's needs a... to be smarter than me. Okay, there it is. Okay. Are you smarter than? Are you smarter than? So the there's king? not one person in St. Louis that is. I nice. Are you smarter than the king? Are you yeah. smarter than the king? I can confidently say there's no one smarter. Are than you me in this smarter town. than the king? Why don't we call it outsmart the king? Oh, that's Ooh, nice. That's... Oh, dumb woman this idea. Not, no. Okay, oh. I don't think we were brainstorming here. This no. is not. I let's thought I, I wanted idea. to oh. contribute. Shoot oh. for the king. I hate yeah. you all right now. <laughs> yeah, if you come for the king, you best not miss. Let's make it very long. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are playing. If you come for the king, you best not miss. No. I like it. All That's right. a great idea. Man. I'm open you know to what? all. <laughs> sit on this. Got to give it a finger. <laughs> I help. I helped you cure your constipation. By the way, this morning. That's it's true. Been, I did eat an orange with earlier. With my helpful tips. No, 
I wouldn't say oh, it's cured. I thought you were announcing. That's weird, a weird way to say that with my helpful tips. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Yummy. Was, nobody went there. What? I did it in my head briefly. Oh, God. With the orange thing. I didn't thing, go there the until you thing. just went there. Yeah, what's wrong? Anyway. Shout anyway. out to everybody's tips. Anyway, name of the game. Name of the game. Are you smarter than the king? Oh, okay. man. It's going to be fun. Good. Scott? Yeah. You're going to kill this. And All right. I was hoping, I love I was hoping to work shopping it, by the way. You're a killer. Title-wise. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take that game out for a spin here in a bit. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. We're all going to have a good time. Maybe give away some prizes. Maybe not, Scott. Maybe not. All Maybe right. nobody's smarter than the king and nothing gets given away. That's right. I bet no one even calling because they're going to be scared to even play. Nope. I bet so, too. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, as we were coming on the air this morning, uh, we found out Toby Keith died. Yeah. What a bummer. 62. Yeah, I just saw that. Uh, I don't really know much of his... I know, I know. Listen, I know he's very popular. Uh, I know the red polarizing Sol- the the red solo cup song. Mm-hmm. His uh, America song is the greatest of all time. Is that the we'll put a boot yeah. in it's your It's our ass. new national anthem, and it should be now. Now that he passed, we need to make that the national <coughs> anthem. <laughs> yes, like that. But man, he's he had some good songs and uh, what was the one? How to uh, um, should have been a cowboy. Always like oh, that one. Yeah, it's a great number. Are and how do you like me now? That's a fun one because he's talking to the labels. I don't know. I, are you serious? Because yeah, I, yeah. I really don't no, know. He had some How great do you like songs? me now? That, that was the first one, right? The rapping one. He he kind of came out when he first hit. It was it was a hit because it was different because he like kind of rapped. Yeah. Like, no. How do you like me now? Was a song where yeah. he How put out an like album and the label said no, so he left the label, released that album somewhere else, and then the album took off. So he wrote a song. How do you like me now? I feel like did. I've heard that story. Is he beer for my horses? Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. him. Yeah. With Willie. Here's a little Toby. And Keith. he has another Willie. Song. You know this song? That's the international stepdad anthem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to talk about me. Oh, is this, this is song you're thinking, dude? Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about me. It's I don't know song. this one. Grab a six pack and a chair. There's a What's this one? I don't know. Music's playing up and down the block. God, I'm like triggered right now. Mostly Christian blue. Right. All the Monroe County boys I dated in high school were like huge Toby Keith fans, so uh, all this was a lot of tears soundtrack today. of my love. All right, let's see what else is coming up here on the Toby Keith medley. I like my truck. So it's like stereotypical. Like my... Oh, it's yeah. cutting in. It's kind of like <laughs> where modern <laughs> country's at. He kind of ushered in where modern country's at because... A lot of pandering. Yeah, he leaned in. Yeah. Which is cool. Which is cool. He leaned into the patriotic. Yeah. He slowly became a bald eagle. Uh, dead at 62. Mm. Wow, Stomach cancer. Bummer. Yeah, I had that since, I think, 2022. Yeah, I thought he was up and out and, you know, getting around. He did a couple of concerts this year, or last shows. year, at the end of the year, but... Were they full shows, or was no, he just popping No, he, like, he popped in on some Yeah, that's what I thought. Did Which is songs. not a good I thought he did, song. like, a... a uh, maybe not. I thought he did, like, a couple sets at, like, small little bars and stuff like that. Mm. He might have. He had that, uh... He had a couple more songs with Willie. Did he, did he sing the one, uh, Roll Me Up and Smoke Me When You Die, or whatever? <laughs> oh, smoke, smoke weed, with Willie. Yeah, he has that song, and then another one where I know it's an older song, but I think he was on a newer version of it. Huh. Roll me up and smoke me when I die, and it's kind of a fun song. But oh. yeah, that's a bummer. Talented guy. All right. Well, most people are looking for good luck on Super Bowl game day, right? Mm-hmm. Rafe loves his Chiefs. Mm, I do. Going to be yelling at the TV a lot, probably. Uh, listen, maybe you're a fan of the Niners or the Chiefs. Maybe you have maybe you have money on the game, or maybe you know you're just hoping for the whole thing to be over quickly, without anybody making a big mess. If you're hosting a party, <laughs> so according to new data, 44 percent of people apparently have game day superstitions involving food. Oh, okay, interesting. I've heard clothes, but not and food. it's serious enough that 85 percent of those people. 
either must have certain foods or refuse to have others on game day. Okay. So which foods are good luck and which are bad luck? Most people said that pizza is their go-to Super Bowl food for good luck. Hot dogs are second, followed by burgers, chips, popcorn, chicken wings, ice cream, chicken sliders, cupcakes, and cookies. These are all good luck foods. Repeat that list, please. <clears throat> pizza, hot dogs, burgers, chips, popcorn, chicken wings, ice cream, chicken sliders, cupcakes, and cookies. All good luck foods. Random. The best foods. All right. Can you imagine a grown ass Chiefs fan throwing a tantrum because they're out of their uh, they're out of sprinkles for their for their lucky game day cupcake? <laughs> 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 the sprinkles are missing. That's why they lost. That's why they lost. Now it's for the bad luck foods. Okay. Number one. By far. Oh. Devil eggs. No. Ah oh, well. Oh. It's in the name. You made that up. You made this. Rafe. No, it's on the list. It's Rafe, in the name. I'm going to give you. You made this list, dude. You I'm going to give you the list of good luck, this. bad list. luck games. It's in plain sight. It's named after Satan. What is okay. going to happen at your house now? You knew this was coming. Deviled eggs, okay. Rafe. Bad luck food for for game day. It's cursed. No, oh, no. Hey, are you going to have them on Sunday? Because if you get them and they lose, then what? We know it's going to be your eggs. fault. Hmm. Yeah, man. Chicken wings are also on this list. The good luck and bag of bad yeah. luck. Yeah, well, there's a little crossover. <laughs> so, what do you do? So, depends on what, what does that you mean? Root, depends on who you're rooting for. Well, I guess if your team loses, ice you cream's say on both, too. Listen, Listen, some people, if, 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 some if, people if, find ice cream and chicken wings to be good luck. Others consider them to be bad luck. Chicken okay? wings are probably good luck for us, but not for Eagles fans or Falcons fans. Yeah, dude. I mean, think it through. Devil Eggs is only on one list, Rafe, the bad list. Number and it's one. Number one. Whatever. It's a cursed. I mean, it's it's right. Well, there. I'm putting it on the good luck list. They're not even hiding it. You can't. Once it's on the bad luck list, it can't come off. Actually, what? this does come down to you, because if you d decide to look this in the face and go, you know what? I'm getting my deviled eggs because I love them. You so already much. gave me the hiccups for life. What else do you want to do to? I me want today? you to win back your good luck. Yeah. I want you to get those deviled eggs and eat them and throw them out. And then and the no, Chiefs you throw them win. out for your well, beloved I'll Chiefs. The curse. For your Here's beloved Chiefs, do. will you sacrifice one day of pleasure? Yeah, because I'll just get a platter of deviled eggs Saturday night and suck them down oh, before damn. midnight. Perfect. <laughs> like a gremlin. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry, buddy. This is upsetting. This is. I'm very upset right now. Oh, you're upset because you're actually kind of considering not having them, right? I mean, I mean yeah. I will, no, I'm not going to have them now. The wheels are Because he, had, he did this on purpose. He brought this list in. Hey, for real, though. He probably made this up. Hey. If they lose, I will assume Learn, that you did. Be, I make this up. You no, broke the rule. But he's looking out for you. He loves you. He does not. He knows right. how much you love those deviled eggs, and you were probably going to have them on Sunday. No, and I want to. No, no, probably. Who do you love more, Chiefs or Devils? Do you love the Chiefs eggs? or deviled I love eggs? the Chiefs more than I love deviled there eggs. There you go. Then, okay, there you go. Then, the answer, then the answer is clear. You'll be not having deviled eggs on. Do you know what? Wow. The deviled eggs didn't go 50 years between Super Bowls. The deviled maybe, eggs maybe, win the Super Bowl for me. Every time. Maybe somebody had devil eggs every one of them years. It's possible. Garlic mm. bread is the second most avoided game day food, followed by salsa and queso dip, ice cream, chicken wings, mozzarella sticks, mini burgers, trail mix, pretzels, and meat pies, which are called pasties. Yeah. Pretzels. That's also what I wear. When <laughs> I now I can't wear my booby tassels. Yeah. Great. There's a bowl of pretzels at every Super Bowl yeah. outing ever. Bad luck. You better yeah, not dude. be reaching also, into those. In that, that, uh, ice cream, chicken wings. Burgers, which were on the good luck list, also. It's a crapshoot. Why, why well, get a mini burger? burgers are bad. Why, why get a burger? Uh, I mean, come on. You can do that any other time. Sliders. Well, I mean, sliders. It's yeah. damn near offensive. You go over to somewhere and you go, oh, cool. I will have a burger. Yeah, but if they're sliders, <laughs> there's so much to offer. Sliders different though. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, a come baby on. Slider on there's like ten boring, items that are crossover items. How boring can items. you be? Yeah, but if you have like many sliders on like Hawaiian, like King's Hawaiian, I'm just rolls, well, that's, yeah. that's not a burger. That's right, not special. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but he said, I mean, it says burgers. If if I go somewhere, they're like, hey, I'm grilling burgers. I'm gonna go what? Mozzarella sticks and who's serving those? By the way, those can't sit. That's a half-assed Super Bowl party. Those can't sit out. I bought them in the bag and I put them in the oven for yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, but yeah, those, once if they sit out, 
It's like burgers. If they sit out for more than three minutes, it's trash. disgusting. Yep. But dude, there's so much overlap. Rafe, how do I know? Don't argue with the list. I'm just saying, how do I know which are mine? <sighs> I want to. I want to do everything I can to stack the deck. Go with chicken pizza. sliders, hot dogs. Pizza, crackers, cupcakes. and fruits. <laughs> They're all on both lists. Chicken wings, ice cream. <laughs> Did you eat deviled eggs last last year? It looks like only chili. Yeah, oh, yeah. You did? Hell yeah, brother. All right, and they won. Oh. But, but it was close. You know what? Your deviled egg. Nachos and deviled chili. Egg away. Made that field a piece of crap. You remember that? It was Nachos and was, chili. The field was a mess. That's yeah. your fault. Looks Nachos like the, and chili. That's it. That's all you need. Nachos, chilies, cupcakes. I'm trying to see which one. Looks like tacos are good. Dude, you're good. It's, tacos it, made listen, a good list. If there's no deviled eggs, it'll still be a good spread. Oh, man. I, listen, I'm looking out for you, buddy, uh, for you, buddy. Well, thank you. Uh, let's do some news. Still need deviled eggs. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some news. And your news being sponsored by... Energy Stars Heating and Cooling, preferred partner of Ameren, Illinois, to make your home comfortable and affordable. Well, if you still think this... Uh, if you still think this cell phone thing is a passing fad, well, guys... <laughs> what are we talking about? What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way it's going to last. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, you may want to sit down for this uh, and stop <clears throat> twirling your fingers around the cord of your rotary phone. Uh... Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, landlines are being phased out. Oh. Probably for good. It's time. That's it. That's it. Phone companies want to shift to newer infrastructure within the next couple of years, which means older copper wire-based lines will be phased out in favor of more advanced technology like fiber optics that, that don't work with landlines. In fact, AT&T just applied for a waiver that would allow it to stop servicing traditional landlines in California. Hmm. And there was a time when landlines were a lot cheaper and much more reliable compared to cell phones, but that's about to reverse. A spokesperson for AT&T says they are not canceling landline service in California or anywhere else yet. But it's about to get even more expensive and less reliable because they'll need to find complex workarounds as they move away from the old equipment. Now, of course, many households gave up their landlines a decade ago, if not longer, but the breakdown of the landline system will impact some older folks, small businesses, and people in remote areas. According to one expert, um, <clears throat> about 100 million landlines between businesses and residential are currently active in the U.S. Yeah. I wonder what this will mean for businesses specifically, because I mean we all have the studio phone or the uh, office phone that's still a landline, right? Yeah. And do people conduct more business? Yeah, but on is that those? is that really a landline? So like I have a landline at home, mm -hmm. but it's I plug it into the it's digital it's somehow. Digital, like I plug it in, it's plugged into my yeah. cable thing. Interesting. Hmm. So that's still digital. All right. I don't know, but it is being phased out. So. It's time to sit mom and dad down and have the talk. A couple weeks ago, a radio station in Oklahoma went off the air uh, after thieves cut down a broadcast tower. Remember to get 100 bucks worth of copper wire from oh, the cables? Yeah. That is nothing compared to this. Uh, last Friday, a radio station in Alabama, WJLX, announced that somebody had stolen an entire 200-foot steel tower. Like it's what? gone without a trace. The whole thing. Mm. Uh -huh. According to a Facebook post, the station owner said that the building was vandalized, every piece of equipment was stolen out of it, and they cut the wires to the tower, downed it, and took it from the property. Wow. Now, the owner doesn't mention anything about surveillance, only to say that the uh, police are investigating. But something tells me the thief or thieves will be tracked down because somebody had to see them making off with a 200-foot <laughs> tower. <laughs> It seems like you should be able to spot that on the road. That's an AM station, too. Yeah, WJLX. Uh, this is the type of thing that makes the boomers hate the kids. 65-year-old guy named Stefano uh, uh, Chueto. Stefano was out on his daily walk through a park in Denver last Thursday and needed to use the bathroom. Luckily, uh-huh, luckily for him, he spotted a porta potty 
an extra large one made by a company called Honey Bucket. <laughs> Why is that name so, isn't so that gross? gross, dude? Well, Pooh Bear. I don't know. I think something with that. Isn't that gross? Yeah. Honey Bucket? You didn't have to church it up. We all know what it is. I like it. Honey Bucket. The name is so gross. Anyway, he went inside to do his business. Then before he finished up, he felt the porta potty moving. <laughs> and thought workers were picking it up to empty it. Sadly, that's not the case. Actually, some teenagers who thought it'd be fun to tip it over while he was in there. Oh, man. And unfortunately, they succeeded. Kaka. You could only imagine how gross that must have been. Uh, he also hurt his back in the fall, but he's feeling better. A man and his son saw it happen, helped to get him out. Uh, they're the ones who said teenagers did it. Although, mm, Ooh. Stefano didn't see the teenagers. They just saw the father and son help him. Oh, I'm thinking it's probably it the father and the son. Mm. That's a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. It's true. Well, they said, hey, we're out here and we're teenagers. We promise. <laughs> so I think we're teenagers tipping this over. Yes. <laughs> Why? We're going to run really quickly. Come now on, guys. Let's tip this over and go listen to our rock music because <laughs> we're teenagers. <laughs> it sounded like it was just you throwing your voice, man. Mm -mm. No, no, there were teenagers. My son and I saw the whole thing. So the kids, you know, could potentially face charges, but they were long gone by the time the cops got there, and it does not sound like they have any leads. Here is uh, Stefano talking about it. I saw the portable potty, and I wanted to use it. I felt the thing uh, start to move, and I was so freaking scared, you know? I started shouting, <laughs> hey, hey! It just hey, kept hey. on moving, and it <laughs> fell to the side. I uh, <laughs> fell on my back, and he said, yeah, I think it was a couple of teenagers. It may sound funny when you're a kid. It's not if you're the guy inside. It's not funny at all. It's, it's something that could have ended in a very unfunny way. Uh -huh. Where's this guy from? I don't know. That what hey, a hey, cute hey. accent. Hey, hey. It needs to be isolated for sure. <laughs> yes, it does. Hey, that hey. He said, I was inside and they said, hey, hey, cut it out. <laughs> I am scared. I'm in here. I'm a pooping. <laughs> and the guy that was instantly made to rescue him did say, I think it was teenagers. I think it was teenagers. Wow. Sounds shady, what right? Cover. Uh, remember we were talking about stealing somebody's lunch at work? I think it was maybe last week or the week before. Uh, this, I would say, is an overreaction to that. Uh, a former Target employee was uh, was arrested, just been sentenced uh, after he killed a co-worker over stolen lunch. Oh, yeah, people are tagging me in this. A 25-year-old guy named Making Bazen. Making sure you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bazen Berhe was sentenced to 100 years in prison for the 2021 murder of his co-worker, 58-year-old Hernan. Bazin says Hernan took his lunch from the office refrigerator at a Target in Virginia. A couple of days later, Bazin attacked uh, Hernan in the parking lot using a hammer mm. and knives. Murdered him. What was the lunch? It was from Panera. I don't know. I don't know. Leftovers. Oh, man. I mean, who reports on this and doesn't get that detail? Right. Amateurs. I, don't, I, I wondered the same thing. I couldn't find it. That's awful. I mean, the story is awful. The story is awful, yeah. I mean, that's an overreaction, yes, indeed. Yeah, it is sad his lunch got stolen. Uh, 30 years of a uh, Bosn sentence has been waived, so uh, 70 years is the max time he could spend in jail. But, yeah, overreaction? You bet. Uh, the next couple of months are going to be busy for Chipotle, which means job opportunities. Uh, Chipotle announced its plans to hire 19,000 additional employees over the next couple of months to prepare for their busiest period of the year, March to May, which they claim is burrito season. Burrito <laughs> season. <laughs> hey, is it true that one of their incentives is uh, their employees eat for free? Because I'm not kidding. My, my daughter is t talking about jobs for the <laughs> next couple of years. And she goes, oh, yeah, no, we want to, me and my buddies want to work at uh, Chipotle because uh, we get free unlimited food. So, oh, really? That'd be a cool perk. Yeah, she wants to be paid in burritos. Oh. Uh, I mean, it's... Those are expensive. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's true. I don't I mean, know because it's. A, I mean, it's an it's an incentive that's working with teenagers. Well, they've already they've already got one hundred ten thousand employees. They're they're adding new benefits to quote prioritize financial and mental health. Uh, the company Chipotle has historically seen its highest volume of sales in the spring season because of weather, daylight, and that 
unsurprisingly, restaurants located near colleges and universities usually see a lot of business during mm -hmm. that time of year. Here it is. Chipotle employees receive one free meal for every daily shift. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. That's one awesome. entree, one drink, one side. Yeah, I think I, when I worked at Bellasino, it was like you had to buy it, mm. you know? Yeah, that's a great they deal. They got a discount maybe. Man, it was when I worked at McDonald's, it was the best. Yeah. Just make whatever you want. Whatever you want. Ugh. Wait, wait. Was that a policy? I or was that was, a Riz move? No, it was policy, but everybody oh, did it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was policy. Dude, that place, that McDonald's I worked at, it was, was feeding Thunderdome. <laughs> huh. yeah, did you it's ever, still open, by the way. Did you oh, ever really? meet the owner? Like the franchise? Even? Yeah. He was an older guy. He's probably dead by now. Uh, older guy at a toupee, I remember. Was he very hands-on or was he like... No. Oh, yeah. He would show up every once in a while. I think he owned a bunch of different McDonald's. Franchisee. Um, older guy in like a rumpled suit. He'd come every every once in a while, you'd see the guy. Hmm. Uh, kind of owner? Did he come in and like make sure that your shirt was tucked in and that you were cleaning no. the ice cream machine or nope. whatever? He just didn't care. No. Nope. Thunderdome. No. Nope. So I'm like, all right, Scott, break. Okay, cool. Go right back to the kitchen and make your own food. You know, back to the sandwich conversation real fast, just thinking about, I mean, Bellasino's is so good. I don't know when the last time you guys have had it. Never. Oh, Never. my God, dude. The bread they make in-house, so good. Bellasino's. And the grinder, they call their sandwiches grinders. grinders. Yeah. And they have the big grinders that you can get for parties. Just saying. Bellasino's. I think I can make a good sandwich. I th I've already got it. I've already got a blueprint it out. Yeah. Like, I got blueprints at home. Actually, on blue paper. Like on, yeah, on blue paper. He's got a drafting <laughs> table that he bought. It's a little overkill. Oh, this a is stand a stand-up drafting table. Yeah, it's a local chain, Bellasino. Because I believe, um, I believe the owner who came into the Lime location where I used to work, Cindy Bellasino, she used to come in. So I think it's a family here in St. Louis. I mean, I would think with the last name. With the last name, coincidentally. Bellasino. Yeah, I mean, was, what a coincidence. That could have been a nickname. I don't know. Uh -huh. Cool lady. Arnold, St. Louis, and St. Charles. So you didn't get a free sandwich every every time you worked? No, I think I had to buy it. Um, probably got a discount, and the, but you got Man, to build it the, sa the same as you're talking. If you work at a fast food place, you got, I mean, come on. I, you got to give your employees free food. <clears throat> it's a heck of a perk. My daughter was legitimately saying, oh, yeah, I want to work there because you get free food. I love if food. you're making your employees pay for food for lunch, mm. come on. We would get the, if something was messed up, if an order wasn't right. That would go in the back room, and you could Oops, eat that. Oops, I'm sorry, sir. I messed up your sandwich. <laughs> I put cheddar instead of Swiss. I'll have to uh, put let this me put to this the side. side. Bummer. <laughs> let me start over. Am I wrong? Like, if you work at a fast food, if you work at Burger King or Chick-fil-A or one of those places, I mean, I would, come on, man. I would think so, but I don't own one of those things, so I don't know. I don't know how much that would cut in. And you already have It's people, not cutting in. You know people are already taking advantage of you. You got the Scott Rizzuto's over here, you know, making lunch for everybody. Dude, I'd make everybody. Like, all right, you want to do six patties? Okay. All right. <laughs> nice. You were experimenting, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll put a lab coat over Get my it, I was gonna say, McDonald's uniform. Oh, I'm going on break. I'm going back to the lab to eat lunch. Uh, so you got Chipotle hiring 19,000. Uh, UPS is cutting 12,000. Uh, they announced they're cutting 12,000 jobs. Uh, the positions uh, being eliminated include managers and contract positions. Uh, I guess they're trying to save money, cost cutting. I know some friends. The company billion dollars. Some friends of mine that basically ran the Papa John's up on the Rock Road. They just lived on Papa John's for years. All their friends and them. Like I mean, I don't think they paid for food. For the entire time they were employed at Papa John's, it was just oh, extra pizza didn't didn't get picked up. Of course, think about what pizza is. It's it's flour, water, which is the dough, flour and water, and then cheap ingredients. Uh, excuse me. Pardon. Better yeah, ingredients. Papa John's fine. better ingredients. <laughs> and they don't give you a free pizza. Come on, man. No, they 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 supported an entire friend group for food. Yeah, even after they left. <laughs> for, yeah, a couple of years and then, then some. Yeah, because then they were friends with everybody that they left behind. So it was awesome. And it was just Still free, free food up. for everybody. All the time. So thank you for your, your service. When I open up my f fast food franchise, oh, yes. it's free food for employees. Right on. All right. For sure. you got to keep everybody happy. Yeah, Taco, when we open our Taco Johns, it'll be employee olays all around. What's up yeah. with that? 
So I mean, it's not cheap. You know that, right? I know. <laughs> why, we haven't given an update in like six months. Why has, why has it stalled? I can tell you off air. All right. Cool. There's still interest. <laughs> All right. Big interest over here. There's a lot that goes into it. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a franchise. <clears throat> franchise. Yeah, I did I did a lot of the... I know you were. You were working A lot of the leg work. I, I had a lot of things secured. I'm just missing I will, one piece. I will one piece. personally tell you that I'm not involved. Yeah. I, I don't want to run Tim. anything. I said, can we invest? And he was like, eh, he wasn't into it. I'm looking for other options, though. It, got, it, it definitely got the wheels turning. Okay. It's a lot to open up a restaurant. It's a lot. It it's is. a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yes. That's why I need an operator partner. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I've been watching the bear. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you know everything about restaurants I know everything. Now. I can write it open on my That's restaurant. exactly how Taco John's would run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallucinations and everything. Uh, and finally, um, an online pastor is uh, fighting allegations that he and his wife defrauded parishioners out of uh, millions of dollars in a cryptocurrency scheme. Oh, no. Yeah, Eli and Caitlin Regalado, the Regalados, have been accused of telling followers to buy index coin as an investment opportunity, told the flock. <laughs> 300 people gave a total of $3.2 million between June of 2022 through April of 2023. The Colorado Securities Division filed civil charges last week because the couple allegedly used of the $3.2 million they invested, or their parishioners invested, they used $1.3 million in proceeds to buy a Range Rover, vacations, and a home remodel. What? Yep. Oh, but Pastor Eli, he's got, a, he's got an excuse. In a video to the congregation, Pastor Eli said, quote, Out of the $1.3 million, half a million dollars went to the IRS. A few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel. The Lord told us to do. Hmm. The Lord told us to do the home remodel. Well, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I get, get it. it. Yeah, the Lord loves Pergo. <laughs> he continued. We took God at his word, sold a cryptocurrency with no clear exit. I'm like, well, where's this liquidity coming from? And the Lord said, trust me. We were just always under the impression that God was going to provide that source. He was, that source was never ending. And he said, <laughs> I either misheard God and every one of you who prayed and came in, you as well, or two, God is still not done with this project. You know, we what? need a pool. Kudos to this dude for at least acknowledging the chance that he may have read it wrong. Hmm. Because honestly, yeah. man, like the the biggest issue is is the the folks that double down and use that as a smokescreen or a shield. I'm not saying this is a good guy. I'm just saying. He that, said the Lord told him to remodel his house. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a first to hear somebody say, maybe I got it wrong. You never hear that. Yeah. Never. Well, he kind of painted himself into a corner there. Uh, yeah, and even so, I'm just telling you, man, most most of the time when those kind of folks are cornered, they come out slashing. And at least <laughs> that's something that you don't typically hear. Maybe I got it wrong. But what is he doing now to put action behind that? Well, he will be going to court uh, and possibly serve some jail time. Yeah. Well. For, defraud <laughs> for defrauding his uh, congregation. Good thing he's a man of faith because the Lord will follow him there too. So, you yeah. Know, Grab your ankles right. and pray. Am I right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right. That is, uh, that's your news. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back. And we're going to play a brand new game called... Uh, are forgot, you smarter than King Scott or you, Beat the King? We hit Beat the we, King. Is it Beat the King? I like Beat Ooh. the King. Uh, beat the King. Beat yeah. the King. Beat All right, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be game of uh, wits, battle mm -hmm. of wits <sighs> on the gridiron. The half. Oh, so we don't have any. Oh, we have no Richard Live tickets. Take those off the board. Taking them it's, off Richard the board. Live tickets off the board. <laughs> We've got Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper tickets. Big summer show at Ministry and Filter, uh, September 1st, Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. We've got tickets for Point Fest 2024 featuring Bad Omens, Wage War, Grandson, Avatar, and many more, Saturday, May 18th at the Amphitheater. And we've got tickets to go see Dropkick Murphys with special guest Pennywise. That'll be in a couple weeks, February 26th, over at the factory. All right, so here's how the game's going to work. Rafe, stop me if I'm wrong here. Because okay. Rafe is the uh, mastermind behind this. Yes. 
Okay, we'll get you on the phone. Through this game that's never been done anywhere on network television. <laughs> we will get you on the phone. Now, Moon, I'm going to have you put six categories up on the Great Wheel. Yes. Okay. We have history. We have English and literature. Ooh. We have geography. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> we have science, math, and miscellaneous. Correct. Wow. So what we'll do cool. is uh, we will get a contestant on the phone. We'll put King Scott in isolation, so you're going to have to be in here for this. Okay. We're going to put the isolation headphones on you. We will spin the great wheel. Yes. The great wheel will determine the category. Correct. We will then ask our listener five questions in that category. Question one will be first grade level. Question two, second grade level, up to fifth grade. Wow. Dang. Jeff Foxworthy going to come in studio? Shh. Okay. Shh. Not, the not the same. It's not the same. Right. It's not the same. Not the same. My apologies. I don't want Jeff Foxworthy and his mustache coming in and suing us. <laughs> That's true. Okay. So we'll have you answer the questions. We'll then pull Scott at isolation. King Scott will answer the same five questions. You have to get more than King. Well, yeah, you have to get more. more Ties go to the king. Ties go to the king. If you tie, Ooh, then you didn't nice. beat him. That's if right. you tie, you did not beat, you beat the king. king. Not a win. You tied the king. When you tie the king, you, you know what King wins. King wins. It's like base runner. Tie goes to tie the goes base to the king. Tie goes to the all king. All right. And how many uh, callers do you want me to? Six. Six, all right. Let's see how, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we do here. Okay. It's a new game, guys. I got it. Beat the king. I really hope it lands on math. That'd be nice. Beat the king. Well, you never know. Yeah. That's my strong Again, suit. first grade to fifth grade level questions. Yeah, maybe math will hit in fifth grade. That would be nice. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Beat the King is next. 757. Tuesday, traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We have severe delays, 270 eastbound between 255 and 64. Average speed about 25 miles an hour. Your right lane is blocked due to a stalled vehicle, 270 eastbound just before Perth Shawl up on the northern side. And there are delays, 64 eastbound between 40 Drive and Bellevue. Your point forecast, partly cloudy today, high of 55. Right now it is 31 at the Point Studio. People are saying that uh, Learn killed Toby Keith. Yep. What? And I'm accepting uh, full responsibility because yesterday I did mention him on this show because I was... Accidentally. Accidentally. I, I, I was thinking... Um, Keith Urban. Keith Urban, but I said Toby Keith. Oh, and then... Learn. I, but I wasn't saying, like, is he okay? I was just... That he just mentioned his name. Mentioned name, yeah. but I will take the heat if that's what people need me to do. So it'll make them feel better. So mm -hmm. that's nice. Yeah, to I'm take here that. to make everybody feel better about themselves. That's so. nice to take that, take that off their shoulders. I have so much power. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, you guys. R.I.P. Yeah, this is where the healing begins. So if you need somebody to to blame, if you're feeling down. Uh, it's Lern's fault that Toby Keith died. Somebody also yeah, said, now you're an official member of the Rizzuto show. Yeah. Yeah. You're not an official member until you killed Thank the you. Slipper, so. It only took me 11 months or whatever. I got a little Carl Weathers heat in a couple emails because I say, Dylan, you son of a bitch, in like every three days on this show. <laughs> yeah. I think so, we mentioned him like last week, too. So you killed Carl yeah, Weathers killed is what Carl you're saying? Not, you're as, not as quickly as you killed Toby Keith. Yeah. You killed him immediately. Yeah. Yeah. It's that wild woman That's energy, dude. That's a bit crazy. All right, let's give away some stuff. All right, today's contest is sponsored by Flynn Landscaping, specializing in lawn, landscape, irrigation, and arbor. Now hiring. Call 314-243-6784. All right, our new game is called Beat the King. Beat the King. <laughs> so we've got uh, Rob Zombie Alice Cooper tickets. We got Point Fest tickets. And we got Dropkick Murphy tickets. So we're going to put King Scott in isolation. Okay. Okay. Uh, Moon will be controlling the isolation headphones. Can't wait to hear you too. Uh, so we have six categories, history, English, and literature, geography, science, math, and miscellaneous. So we'll put Scott in isolation. We'll spin the great wheel. <coughs> Correct. See what category comes up. We'll give the listener five questions in that category. Correct. My uh, category will come off the board. The category will come off the board. Okay. Once you've done it, we, you can't do it twice. And it'll be question one will be first grade level question up to fifth grade. Correct. We'll take King Scott as, at isolation. We'll ask the same, ask the same five questions. Uh, if you get more questions right than King, you win. If you tie the King, tie goes to the King. Yeah. You don't win. 
That is correct. You will have approximately eight seconds to answer the questions. Not a time wow. thing. We just don't want people Googling it on the other end. Well, oh, I see. That's, that's to protect you okay, more thank than you. anything else. You just can't take forever. You're either going to know these or not know these. They're not hard. Well, there's I've no, seen this with a, a certain game. That's similar to this. Match of the Moon? Yeah, Match of the Moon, and you guys will take two minutes. What do you mean, you guys? First of all, that's different. Yeah, we can, I'm we a can, woman. Clearly, we're not looking up anything. Yeah, you're yeah, playing yeah. against a listener. Okay. I think eight also, seconds is ever taken two will, minutes. These questions will Sorry, not be the and a half of the ones you're talking about. All right, let's get King Scott in isolation. Scott, hey, good luck, buddy. Thank you. I got it. You're going to be good. You're going to be great. All right, Scott's in isolation. Let's go to the phones. And we have uh, Mike and Baldwin. Good morning, Mike. Hey, you guys. And Lauren. Hi, thanks. Hello. All right, hey. Scott's in isolation. Moon, if you would, please spin the great wheel. Okay, we are spinning the great wheel. And the first category Here we will go. be. First category will be. Uh, looks like history. History. Great. All right, Mike, history. So. Question one will be first grade level up to fifth grade. Are you ready, Mike? Yes, sir. All right, here we go, Mike. All right, Mike. Good Eight luck. seconds to answer every question. Good luck beating the king. Your first question. The first Thanksgiving was celebrated by Native Americans and what other group of people? Pilgrims. I'm sorry, what did you say? Say pilgrims. Okay. Pilgrims. All right, great. Got a great connection. Can't wait to finish this game out with you. <laughs> what are the three branches of the United States government? Uh, judicial, uh, exec, no, no pass. Well, you don't really get to pass, so that's just a miss. All right, cool. Okay. Third grade, what object beginning with the letter Q did people write with during the Middle Ages? Quill. Great. Fourth grade, what ancient civilization built the Machu Picchu complex in Peru? Aztec. All right. Fifth grade, what was the name of the last queen of France? The last queen of France. I say, uh, shoot, Elizabeth, I don't know. All right. Okay. All right. Those All right, were your answers to beat the king. All right. Let's um, go with King Scott. Let's bring out the king. You got the time wow. to go on, Moon? Moon? Yep, that song, I haven't heard that in so long. City Sleeps, right? Yeah, good stuff. Dude, that's a beautiful song. All right, here we go, Scott. I could just listen all day now. <laughs> all right. Scott, Mike's trying to take you down. Mike's trying to take, take you down. down. Can Mike, Mike beat the king? Got it. Your first grade, your first question, Your first of all, your history well, was... History. The okay. category. Category is okay. history. Category is history. Your first grade question is, the first Thanksgiving was celebrated by Native Americans and what other group of people? Uh, pilgrims. What are the three branches of the United States government? Legislative, ex executive, and judicial. Excellent. What object, beginning with the letter Q, did people write with during the Middle Ages? Quill. What ancient civilization built the Machu Picchu complex in Peru? <clears throat> I want to say Peruvians, but I know it's not. It's um, uh, the uh, uh, Pikachus. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty confident on that one. Yeah, that's, that yes. felt like a slam dunk. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> what was the name of the last queen of France? Last queen of France. Um, that's correct. That's your fifth grade question. Oh, boy. Last queen of France. Uh, I will say queen. Um, four seconds. Three seconds. Queen. One second. Answer. He's out. Oh, All right. Okay. He's out on that one. All right. All right. Here we go. That's the reveal. Mike. You ready, yes, Mike? Sir. Are you we smarter go than King Scott? Did you beat the king? First question. The first Thanksgiving was celebrated by Native Americans. What other group of people learned? Mike said pilgrims. King said pilgrims. The answer is pilgrims. Wow. wow. Nice. Both know that. One to one. Second grade question. What are the three branches of the United States government? Mike didn't know. He knew judicial and kind of executive, but he forgot legislative, which King Scott knew all three. Scott in the lead. Third uh -oh. grade question. What object beginning with the letter Q did people write with during the Middle Ages? Mike said quill. King said quill. The answer is quill. Fourth grade. What ancient civilization built the Machu Picchu complex in Peru? 
Mike said the Aztecs, and King Scott said Pikachus. <laughs> the answer is the Incas. So they were Incas, wrong. thank you, thank you. That's what it is, yeah. And finally, close. fifth Translates grade, what was the name of the last queen of France? Mike said Elizabeth. King Scott couldn't make up his mind. And the answer was Marie Antoinette. So they both uh, lost that. So the final yeah. score is... Three to two, King Scott. You did not beat you King Scott. Beat King Scott. Scott. Wow. That guy was a professor. Wow. Okay. Professor <laughs> Oh, That's boy. amazing. I beat a professor. Professor Mike. <laughs> Back in isolation, I like the Scott. narrative that you're Back telling yourself. All right, let's right, take history one. off the take board. History off the board. All right, let's go to uh, Doctor Tristan in Granite City. Good morning, Doctor. Not a doctor, but what's up, bud? Yeah, we'll just call you Doctor. Yeah. Doctor. Hell yeah. Doctor Tristan in uh, Granite City. All right, move. Doctor Spin T. the wheel. Here we go. Let's see what the next category is. Can you beat the king? Ooh, All right, miscellaneous. miscellaneous. All right. Miscellaneous is the category. That sucks. Oh, that could be anything. That sucks. That sucks. All right. Dr. Positivity. Dr. Positivity. Are you ready to beat the king? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Here All right. Go. Your category is miscellaneous. Question one. An insect has six legs. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. The red-shelled insect, often known as a ladybug or ladybird, is in fact... A type of blank. Beetle. Other than water, the most consumed beverage in the world is what? Oh, iced tea. Although it is acceptable to refer to a peanut as a nut, it is more accurately described as what? A fruit? <laughs> All right. What is the primary difference between ocean water and tap water? The pH balance. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Oh, shoot. Right. Okay. Oh, Scott's turn now. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see if you can beat Dr. T. Your category is miscellaneous. King Scott, are you ready? A doctor? Uh, yes. Dr. Tristan. Mr. T's brother, Dr. T. <sighs> okay. King Scott, an insect has six legs. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. The red-shelled insect, often known as a ladybug or ladybird, is in fact what type of bug? Beetle. Other than water, the most consumed beverage in the world is what? I'm going to say coffee. Although it is acceptable to refer to a peanut as a nut, it is more accurately described as a what? Lagoon. Ooh. What is the primary difference between ocean water and tap water? Salt. Okay. All right. Let's get our answers. Why is tap water has sharks in it? Can Tristan Dr. T. Okay. The first question, an insect has six legs. How many legs does a spider have learned? Dr. Tristan and King Scott both said eight. Yay. Well done. So far, you're doing great, Dr. Them. T. The red-shelled insect, often known as a ladybug or ladybird, is in fact a... Uh, Dr. Tristan said beetle, so did King Scott. Yay. Oh. That is correct. It is a beetle. All right. Other than water, the most consumed beverage in the world is what? Dr. Tristan said iced tea. King Scott said coffee. The answer Ooh. is tea. Are we gonna it give is tea? Gonna give it, really? I'm going to give him oh, iced tea. We coffee. heard that report recently where it was flipped, yeah, where coffee is surpassed tea. I heard it was coffee. <laughs> Although it is acceptable to refer to a peanut. But just so you guys know, Tristan is up three to two. Okay. Three to two. Well, Although it is acceptable congrats. to refer to a peanut as a nut, it is more accurately described as a what? Dr. Tristan said fruit, and King said legume. And the correct answer is legume. Legume. Tied up. Three, three. All tied Comes up. Comes down to this. What is the primary difference between ocean water and tap water? Tr Dr. Tristan said uh, pH balance, and King Scott said salt. And the answer was salt. Salt. Oh! Oh, the comeback wow. Dr. Tristan did not, yeah. did not beat the king. Yeah. Did not beat. And by the way, I think we had that report recently where his coffee was number two the, now. I'm pretty sure. It's t well, tea is number one then, right? Well, Besides he's number one. For no, after taste. water, it would be water coffee. Water is one. You That's took, what I'm saying. You number took two. the win. We'll argue okay, that. I got the win. The Bing AI I'll says tea. Woo! Can't believe a, a professor said, and a doctor so far. This the is The Bing wild. AI says tea, so. Yeah. You, you got the win. Okay. All right, take miscellaneous <laughs> off the... We're going to argue your way wheel. out of a win. That's... <laughs> I know. <laughs> very on brand. All right, so we got uh, English, geography, science, and math left. Oh, uh, no. Uh, put your Scott, head isolation. Back. These are getting fun now. Put him in ISO. Oh, boy. Nathan, hello. What it do, ninjas? All right, Nathan, spinning the wheel. Here we go. What's it going to be? It's going to be... Oh, it's on math. No! 
Oh, it's English. English. English literature. All right. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. First grade question <laughs> right now. Coming at you. First grade, the plural of moose is what? Four seconds. Hello. He's thinking. Hello, I'm here. Plural of moose is what? Mooses. Okay. What type of lit second grade question? What type of literature features magical creatures such as giant gnomes and goblins? Fairy tales. Okay, third grade question. The person in the novel who tells the story from a third person perspective is called the what? Narrator. Fourth grade question. What is the main character in a story called? Protagonist. Who is the cre fifth grade question? Who is the creator of the classic book characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Mark Twain, oh. aka Samuel Clemens. All right, he's a smart guy. Hang on one smart second. That's Nathan. That's awesome. Nathan was on. Awesome. 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 All right, Scott. I'm going to finish the song first. Just take your headphones off. <laughs> That's a really good song, though. <laughs> Scott? Yeah? It is English and literature. Right. English, English and literature. English and literature. All right. That's I can still hear playing the, over here. I can hear the headphones. Beat the king. Here we go. I apologize. First grade question. The plural of moose is what? Moose. Second grade. What type of literature features magical creatures such as giants, gnomes, and goblins? Um... It's not. It's not fantasy. It's a. Um, wait. Repeat the question again. Just make what sure. What type of literature features magical creatures such as giants, gnomes, so, and goblins? It's so simple. It's a. Uh, um, it is simple. <laughs> Where's that word in Two my seconds. my brain? Come here. Answer. Time. All right. All right. He's done. Third um, grade question. The person in the novel who tells the story from a third oh. person perspective is called the what? Sorry. Say it again. The my brain just went, my th I thought of the other one, sorry. Right. Time's going. going. The yeah. person in a novel who tells the story from a third-person perspective is called a what? The narrator? Oh, what? There you go. Fourth grade question. What is the main character in a story called? Protagonist. Fifth grade question. Who is the creator of the classic book characters Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn? Mark Twain, Samuel Clements. All okay. right, excellent job. Wow. All right. Thank you. Nice. Make sure I didn't want to get tricked there. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Here we go. Ah, it's going to be close. Man. I got to be honest. Can I'm really sad about this second. I'm like, Can Nathan beat the king? Here we go. First grade question. Nathan v. King. The plural of moose is? Nathan said mooses and King said moose. And the correct answer is moose. One point king. Ah, There's no S yeah. in mooses. One point king. Second grade question. What type of literature features magical creatures like giants, gnomes, and goblins? Nathan said fairy tales, and King couldn't decide. And the correct answer is fairy tales. Right. Yeah. I almost said fantasy. I was stuck in fantasy. and God, yeah. you didn't. Third grade question. The person in a novel who tells a story from a third-person perspective is called what? Nathan said narrator, as did King Scott. And the correct answer is the narrator. Sounds similar. Fourth grade question. What is the main character in a story called... Nathan and King Scott both said protagonist. The correct answer is the protagonist. Yay! Very well done. And the creator of classic book characters, Tom Sawyer. Hang on, we gotta... Uh, hey, hang on, man. Let's oh, get some oh, drama. We gotta add drama here. <laughs> wow. Are we tied right now? Yeah, yeah. you're tied. We're uh, doing the question. Oh, boy. For the win. Come on. Sorry, I didn't know you had a drum roll queued up. I I've always got the hands. Yeah, I've always got the, the drum roll here. Been paid As my wrist looks so heavy. Who is the creator of the classic book characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Nathan and King Scott both said Mark Twain Just with Samuel Clemens to show off, which and means they're tied up. They are both correct. Wow. Thank you, and a you tie, tie goes to the king. the king. Wow. Mooses, Mises. Oh. Sorry. Yep. King, this is great. King's going undefeated. You can't, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm very impressed. A lot of people man. talk trash you online. Tie oh, goes king. Well, here's, here's where things will change. <laughs> yeah, there's some categories left that I feel <laughs> like judges are going to be greatly improved. Science and math. Let's, Let's do make it. sure we stop down for some dramatic effects. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come on. Can just dude. roll through these. Well, I can't believe I beat a professor. Back in isolation. I like how we're like, we got to do this. We got to stick to a time limit. Can we start that song? over? That was really good. Yes, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> I said, Guys, we just can't be taken can't all be day. You gotta go quick. For and the then answering gets, of the questions, like, you dicks. <laughs> take your time. Sit in it. Let it breathe. All right, hey, no, let's you breathe, know what man. I was talking about. This I'm with you. is a show. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm adding this for a little drama. <laughs> all right, Dylan, hello. 
Hello. All right, Dylan, uh, three categories left on the wheel. Geography, science, math. Spin the wheel. All righty. Oh, come on, math. Come on, math. Okay, here we is. got math. Babe Ruth. Math. <laughs> <laughs> math will be the category. Oh, who? Okay. That's going to be fine. That sounds good. It'll be fine. Let me get to my math. Uh, okay. Oh, good Jesus Christ. This, this is hard. Hey, wow. Hey, 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 hey. Why is it Jesus Christ? <laughs> Cheese and rice. Cheese and rice. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. This is a very hard. This is a hard category. All right. Math. First grade question in math. How many face cards are in a regular deck of playing cards? Uh, 52. What is the er second grade question? What is the area of a triangle with a height of four and a width of four? 12. Third grade question. When writing out a fraction, the numbers above and below the viniculum, the vinculum are called the what? The vinculum is the line in a fraction. The number above and below? Yeah. yeah. What are they called? Uh, the numerator and the denominator. All right. Great job. Fourth grade. If a train leaves the station and travels 60 miles per hour, how much time will have passed when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? Four Tuesday. hours. Four hours was his answer. Fifth grade. A hexagon has how many sides? Six. All right, great job, man. Well, it sounds like the fourth grade question was a bit harder than the fifth grade question. <laughs> yeah, those fifth graders are just skating into Ooh, middle school, idiots. aren't they? All right. <laughs> By that time, they've given up. All right, Scott, math is so, category. Exactly what I wanted, so this is good. This is my strong suit, too. Here you got a go. chance. Scott, nope. math is your category. Yeah. First good, grade. King you. Scott, so first grade question. How many face cards are in a regular deck of playing cards? 52. Second grade question. What is the area of a triangle with a height of four and a width of four? An area? Oh, oh man, gosh. Um, I'm going to say... We'll go with... Um, 16. All right. Third grade. When writing out a fraction, the numbers above and below the vin vinculum are called the what? The vinculum is the line in a fraction. Above the line? Both. Above and below. What are they called? Um, numbers. Okay. <laughs> Fourth grade question. If a train leaves a station traveling 60 miles per hour, how much time will have passed when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? Okay. One more time. The train leaves a station traveling at 60 miles per hour. How much time will have passed when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? Okay, so 60 miles per hour. Um, it's going to be... Five seconds. I know. Wait, wait, don't do it yet. Don't count it down yet. <laughs> don't, uh, get to yet. Just, All right, um, don't start the timer yet. <laughs> um, it is two seconds. We'll say... Need an answer. 1800, wait, 1800. 1800. Okay. What was 1800. it? No, what was 1800 hours? That is your <laughs> No, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Ah, I, I, you gotta move on. Anyways, right. fifth grade question. A hexagon has how many sides? Has six. All right. Great All right. Job, okay. Um, oh, man. Wait, Thank can you, you repeat that fourth? I don't know why I'm You're going to hear it oh, right now. It's too that. late. Okay. Here we go. All right. Can. I wouldn't stress on that one. Okay. Yeah, this, can these Dylan were this stuff is category beat by the king. far. Can Ken beat the king? First grade question. How many face cards are in a regular deck of playing cards? Dylan Fa said 52 and King said 52. Face cards, guys. Face cards. Uh, Correct answer is 12. 12. Mm. Face, 12 cards. face cards. Uh -huh. Face cards. Face, face. Second grade question. What is the area of a triangle with the height of four and the width of four? Dylan said 12. King said 16. Correct answer, eight. No points yet. Oh, for All right, so we're, so we're crushing it, man. Third grade. When writing out a fraction, the numbers above and below the vinculum are called the what? Dylan said numerator and denominator, and King said numbers. That sounds better. Correct answer is numerator and denominator. I forgot about one that one. for Dylan. I haven't heard that in a million years. Dylan! It's okay, you can Dylan, get on the board. Dylan, you son of a bitch. No, you can't. <laughs>
Hey, 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 hey now, guys. If the train leaves the station and travels at 60 miles per hour, how much time will it pass when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? Dylan said four hours, and King Scott said 1,800 hours. <laughs> <laughs> five, right? I'm multiplying it for some reason. And the answer is the five, hours. Five, hours. <laughs> five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Yeah. Yeah. Five hours. Divide. All right, it comes down to this. A hexagon has how many sides? Dylan's up one. Dylan said six, as did King Scott. Correct answer is indeed six. Dylan. Dylan. Dylan beat the king. Dylan beat the king. Beat the throne, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, Dylan beats the king. Good job, Dylan. <laughs> I think you beat yourself. There's there, a new king. I, in I, yeah, town. I definitely did. 1800. <laughs> I was not paying attention to that. Oh, do uh, uh, what? Let's do I don't one know. more. I was let's like, wait a second. More. What are you even asking? All right, one more. One Put more. Go into isolation. Please. Isolation one more time. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello. All right, Ryan. It's either science or geography. Here we go. Moon's going to spin the wheel. And here's a category. Oh, Can Ryan? No, it's geography. Okay. Geography. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me turn the weak geography. spot of the ratio has been selected. Geography. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Ryan. Good luck beating the king. Your first grade geography question is: How many continents are there? Seven. Okay. Second grade: Which state is called the Lone Star State? Texas. Okay. Third grade, what is the longest river in the world? Uh, the Nile. Fourth grade, where is the largest desert in the world located? Um, Four seconds. Middle East somewhere. I'll also accept the name. <laughs> Time up. Uh, no clue. No clue. That is not the correct place. But fifth grade okay. question. Okay. What is the main language smoke spoken in the Canadian province of Quebec? Uh, French. All right. Great okay. job, man. Here we go. Scott's turn. All right, Scott, your category is geography. Okay. And by the way, I don't know how that band wasn't... A mainstream, Ooh. just giant oh, artist. Plenty of reasons. Who? Gosh, City Sleeps is There's so a good. You City too. Sleeps. Oh, City Ooh. Sleeps. Yeah. Okay. Right, Scott, you ready? Well, yeah. Scott's wakes up. Let's go. <laughs> Be in that band. Be the Scott wakes up band. And on a good note. Okay, I'm gonna try. You should go four for five today. Geography is your category. Your first grade question: How many continents are there? How many continents? There's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three seconds. Oh, wait, wait. I'm going to say, man, I should know this. Seven. All right. Yeah. Oof. All right. Another guy. <laughs> right the wire. Second grade question. Which state is also called the Lone Star State? Texas. Third grade question. What is the longest river in the world? The Nile. Fourth no. grade. Yeah, I'm going to say Nile. Fourth grade question. Where is the largest desert in the world located? I will also accept the name of the largest desert. I want to say it's Africa. I'm going to go Africa. The continent. Okay. Is that what you're asking? What yeah. Continent? Okay. More specific. Um, Sahara. Part. Sahara. All right. Fifth grade. What is the main language spoken in the Canadian province of Quebec? French. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ken. Dang it. Ryan it was beat North the king. Uh, he did all right, I think. Both of you guys did all right. Ryan. Mm -hmm. Good luck beating the king. First grade question was, how many continents are there? Ryan and King both said seven. That is the correct answer. Seven. One to one. Bless Second you. grade question. You. you really Bless pulled you. that one out. Yeah. I was worried about you on that one. <laughs> Which state is also called the Lone Star State? King and Ryan both said Texas. That is the correct answer. Texas. Two to two. Third grade question. What is the longest river king in the world? King and Ryan both said the Nile. And the correct answer is the Amazon. It is? The okay, Amazon. I almost switched it and I didn't. The fourth grade question, where is the largest desert in the world located? Ryan said the Middle East and kind of said not that. And then King said Africa and the Sahara. And the correct answer is Northern Africa, the Sahara. Yeah. Accept that answer. Yeah. Right. Two King I, I believe out of this. typically when they ask the longest river thing, Amazon and Nile are both accepted. 
because I think the Nile, like by miles, is longest, but Amazon is. Like, it has the most the veins or whatever. Most volume, yeah, yeah like tributaries. Distance. Tributaries, thank you. Well, I look forward to the un- endless emails that that comment will get me <laughs> for the rest of the day. Fifth grade. What is the main language spoken in the Canadian province of Quebec? Ryan and King Scott both said French. And the wee wee. Is French. All right. Ah. Ryan did not beat the king. Did not ah, beat the king. The king yeah. went hard sorry, today, dude. Well, sorry, you didn't have math. Only one person <laughs> beat the king, Dylan. and that was Dylan. Congratulations. Yeah, good job, Dylan. Wow. Good job, buddy. That's, that's, you did all right. I'll take it. You did all right. <laughs> St. Louis, check yourselves before you wreck yourselves. It's yeah. not as easy beating the king as you think it's going to be. Well done. Hey. The maiden voyage of our new game. Can you keep those king. same questions for next time? No. <laughs> Just so you... Before I get a bunch of emails, the Nile River question would have made zero difference in that game. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. 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 And honestly, man, if we let three weeks go by and he's asked the exact same questions, <laughs> I mean, you guys have done that to us in, in Match of the Moon, and, yeah. and Riz yeah. and I have boxed that. don't matter. Differently. It won't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Especially the math. This has to be yeah, right, We'll take a break. Matter. We'll come back. Crab on Celebrities <laughs> next. It is 835. It is Tuesday. Traffic and Weather Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Right-hand shoulder blocked due to a crash. 270 westbound just after Perch Hall. Uh, there's also two lanes blocked due to a crash. 270 southbound at Olive. And then we have two lanes blocked due to a crash. 64 westbound at Kings Highway Boulevard. Your point forecast partly cloudy. High of 55. Right now it's 33 at the Point Studio. All right, Lauren, what do you got for us? Westboro Baptist Church gets down with the sickness. R.I.P. to Toby Keith, Sammy Hagar's retort, and did you know little weird facts about celebs? We're going to play a little game. All right, we got that. We got your crappy birthdays. We got the porno birthday. All that and more next. And your crap on celebrities, stay there. You know, it's amazing uh, what qualifies for a good career decision in 2024. So last month, a teenager in Iowa named Eli... He launched an Instagram account called Peanut Butter Eater 16. <laughs> peanut Butter Eater 16. And he promised to eat one tablespoon of peanut butter for every 50 <laughs> followers he got. Wow. Oh, my. But, guys, he quickly found himself in a <laughs> jam. Oh. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you, punny, you punny bastard, you. Uh, uh, more than 100,000 people followed him in a single week. <laughs> so he's currently sitting around 115,000, which would be 2,300 spoonfuls or 72 16-ounce jars. But uh, thankfully, he and his parents thought better of it. Uh, he stuck with the plan until day six when 20,000 people followed him overnight. <laughs> uh, at that point, he said he'd eaten a cup of peanut butter or half a jar uh, for every 10,000 followers he got. But... Even that's been a challenge. Hmm. So his mom says he's gone through seven large 64-ounce uh, jars in the past month, which is 28 pounds. Oh my goodness. Golly. Uh, it sounds like a lot of it wasn't eaten. When he hit t- 100,000 followers, he celebrated with a video where he covered himself in peanut butter. Oh, oh okay. what a nightmare. Uh, nice. This is your nightmare, yeah. Yeah. His brand of choice is Skippy. <laughs> so they sent him a care package filled with snacks and swag. He started posting paid content, too. Like a video where he eats peanut butter while wearing Good a, a brand him, sunglasses. Man. He's killing it. He's already selling merch. <sighs> and just challenged the, you know, changed the challenge again. He's now eating a spoonful of peanut butter for every 50 sales he gets. Uh. <sighs> Sometimes you realize you're working too hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, well, here he is talking about him and his mom. <laughs> All over the internet, they've been doing just certain things for so many followers, and I thought, well, peanut butter's pretty good. My first thought was that it was f- kind of funny, and then I started to be in awe at how fast his account was growing. I was expecting it kind of as a joke to get, you know, maybe a couple hundred, but... You never know what's going to take off. You never know, like, somebody know. gets, you know, somebody gets wind of something. It's so weird. And it just goes around and... Now this kid's covering himself in peanut butter for 
But and then once it got in the thousands, it kept going. And I thought it was funny at first. And then once I realized how much peanut butter I had to eat, then it wasn't much of a joke anymore. And it was a lot of peanut butter. I've spent pretty close to $150 on peanut butter to support this venture for him. And now he's got paid sponsorships. I love it. Killing it. Yeah. It's great, man. Killing it. All right, let's do crap on celebrities. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it is brought to you by our friends over at Bright House Plumbing. Call the best, flush the rest, brighthouseco.com, 636-600-0188. Uh, David Draymond is calling out the Westboro Baptist Church after some of their members were protesting outside of their Kansas City show last week. Here's a little bit of David Draymond on stage. I haven't heard from these guys I in know. a while. I know, huh? and I love it. Like, I loved when the Foo Fighters... Oh, would troll them? Trolled them with the uh, flatbed concert that they did. And I, so I love whenever rock stars will call these people out. <laughs> but you're also fueling them. Like, when uh, you call them out, like, we hadn't heard from, they still, they protest all the time. Sure. But you don't hear about them anymore because nobody talks about them anymore. Yeah. I mean, Is it still a, just a family? It's such a, like, an isolated thing. And the, the more this happens, the more oxygen you're giving them. I don't know. Yeah, I like it. I like that they, just listen to what he says. All right, Good stuff. But it was brought to my attention that a contingent from the Westboro Baptist Church came here to protest the show. What an absolute load of unbelievably stinking, festering a horse Let me ask you something. Do you see any sin up here? What could possibly be bad about setting the people free every single night? You know what's a sin? Vanity is a sin, mother and for them to be so vain as to look down from their high horse and look at all of us and tell us that we're doing something wrong, who's the sinner? Also, he sounds like the Wizard of Oz, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Pay no attention to the man <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yesterday we did a David Lee Roth update because the Roth show has been putting out all this content. Roth show. Roth show. Roth show has been putting out all this content and Dave has kind of lost it with Wolfgang Van Halen. And we haven't heard anything from Wolfie or Alex Van Halen, but now Sammy was interviewed by People Magazine and he weighed in on David Lee Roth taking shots at Wolfgang Van Halen on his podcast. And so um, Sammy says, look, if you really want to think about what he said, it's like, do I sense a little tinge of jealousy in there or something. Does he feel like he's left out? I mean, honestly, the only thing I can say without being cruel is he, Dave, needs to find a new dispensary. That one's not working for him. <laughs> Uh, prior to turning his venom on Wolf, Roth also took aim at Hagar, saying that he was sex probed by aliens. Which, which he had no Sammy comment. Hagar is not <laughs> denying, by the way. Yeah, he didn't say no. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy's like, hey, broken clock's wrong twice a day. <laughs> About the probing? Yeah. That's that's right. And he did, I mean, he has seen aliens, he says. So, so Sammy says, yes. Justin Timberlake and his close sources believe that he's considering a tell-all interview with Oprah, saying Justin is really not happy about how things have gone down with Britney Spears. He wanted his new music to speak for itself. That's clearly not happening. And the source adds, quote, Justin had hoped the backlash from Britney's memoir would have been blown over by now so he could focus on his new album, which he's very excited about. It, it may have been. If he had just not said something from the stage. You mean last yeah. week? Yeah. Last week. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's like... Nobody. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, she has a microphone, <clears throat> but everybody's watching her because of the craziness happening. So it's not, it's not like, you know, he just didn't need to involve himself. Poor decision. Poor it's decision. the same thing, like what you're saying with the Westboro Baptist Church. Just don't blow air on the fire to get it to yeah, be Yeah, I mean, it, it had gone away, and everybody was excited, and yeah. it was on SNL, and he's got a new song coming out. Mm -hmm. The people that aren't liking him right now has nothing to do with Britney, really. It has more to do with that stuff with the... With the old gal on a movie set. Doesn't that, isn't it interesting though that he released that late, latest song called Selfish and then the Britney fans got her old song from like 20 years ago to go number one or, or chart higher than that new song. I mean, it's kind of incredible what the fans did to rally behind her, hmm. you know, which I think is kind of, it's like a new warfare, a cultural, cultural very war, strange, yeah, you know, very weird. Aerosmith's farewell, peace out to her, which by the way, because the Stevie Nicks tour got announced yesterday, May 7th, at Enterprise Center, I think I'm going to pull out my Aerosmith money and get my ma some good... May 7th. So this May 7th? This May 7th, yes. She just added some more dates to uh, 
2024. So I think I'm pulling my grand out of Aerosmith, and I might be putting that towards the White Witch herself. Did wow. you get the money back yet? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to get my refund and then give it right back to Ticketmaster. Oh, May 7th is a Tuesday. I know. It's a Tuesday show, huh? I know. We'll see how that goes. But Aerosmith's uh, farewell Peace Out tour has been on ice since September. As we know, Steven Tyler, he, he blew his larynx out for... Um, the fourth show that they were supposed to play. Nothing's been rescheduled, and even though he says his throat's been better but is still on the mend, his daughter Mia told People Magazine he is doing much better, but he's not supposed to be talking. I mean, this is how serious it is. I don't think you can. How can you pull your money out? What do you mean? Aren't they just holding it? No, I can get a refund. Oh, you can? Yes. If you it's want a refund those, from Aerosmith, you can get it. It's like, can you ask them about my rage tickets? Machine, <laughs> I'm going to hold your money. Yeah, can yeah. you ask them about my rage tickets? It's up to me now yeah. if I want to get it. They haven't canceled it, so I would have to rebuy if they come back but i think it's worth it anyway mia uh, tyler says you can't shut up her dad he can't close his mouth he's uh but he's very healthy so i guess that's good news for all uh, of us I love him who steven nicks playing with stevie nicks i don't know actually i, don't, I think it's just an evening an with? evening with i don't think i saw who was opening up for I'll her it up. green day these are just some quick notes green day has shared a new video about recording coma city from their upcoming or their new album saviors you can check that out on the blog today um Speaking of Fleetwood Mac, the late Christine McVie's Yamaha C3 Baby Grand Piano sold for just over 50 grand at Julian's auction to benefit Music Dang. Cares. Other big sellers of that auction were James Hetfield's autographed signature ESP LTD Vulture uh, model guitar that went for just over 32 grand, and a signed hardcover copy of Paul McCartney's book The Lyrics 1965 to Present sold for $16,000. Doesn't say. Who do you think would? Open um, up for Stevie. Well, it says solo tour. Hmm. Yeah, but that doesn't mean nobody's playing with nobody's okay. an opener. Okay. Uh, I don't know. You know, be cool well, as hell. Well, 2SG will. If uh, Kate Hudson just released a song, I love her, so I'm a little biased. Anything she does, I'm going to love. But I think it'd be really neat if she went on tour with this little EP she put out and mm. opened up for Stevie Nicks. Mm. That would, my head would explode. You guys don't care. Um, X Slayer <laughs> guitarist <laughs> Kerry King will release his solo debut from Hell I Rise on May 17th. It's a really kick ass song. Um, his band on the album includes members from Hell Yeah and Death Angel. And his first single, Idle Hands, came out yesterday. If you're a fan of Slayer or speed metal and you haven't listened to the new Kerry King, you're going to really like it. Um, Smash Mouth singer Steve Harwell and rapper C Knight were snubbed in the In Memoriam segment on the oh, Grammys. Man. So, whoops. I don't know, C Knight. But I don't Steve either. Steve Harwell, that's that's a bummer. That's yeah, a that's a big that bummer. That's a miss. That's a that's a swing and a miss for sure to not have him on the E Memoriam. I agree. Mm. Did they do the this e on memoriam, purpose? Just, memoriam. Sorry. No, they had to. In memoriam. Right? We had him in the E Memoriam. We did. We did. Rafe did. Do we do this? Did uh, they do this on purpose? Yeah. Like the 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 de the death snubs. There's no way they forgot that he right? passed because I mean, he's one of the biggest artists from yeah, the night. These 90s, are some of the like, biggest producers in this game. The internet exists. I mean, how how do you miss? It's only one year. You got to cover. How? Yeah, and that was a big one too. It's yeah. always a big one. And how many? It's always it's you many know. hours that song's been played. You know, since it's been or his, their music's been played since it's been released. Is it so wow. we talk more about the Grammys because no one ever holds it? That's against a good them? question, man. Because I do think it happens every year. Every and I'm year. I'm starting to wonder this, if they're like, who do we leave out this year this, to keep the buzz going? Exactly. I think it's error. Really? I mean, who I would offend people enough? Be, but but there not, was so much <laughs> other stuff with the Grammys. That, why would you want this heat? Right. Because because the heat. Is is only promo. No, no one doesn't forgive them for forgetting. I'm Steve not forgiving them. Harvey or uh, or Harvey Harwell. Or Harwell. You know, it, nobody's going to be like, I am boycotting 2024, 2025 Grammys because they forgot Steve Harwell last year. I like that you're standing up right but now. But you know you what I'm saying? It. Like, like it's it's a forgivable thing that they intentionally. It's got to be. Yeah. I don't know. Man. I hate you to be cynical, but it, I did 38 percent increase viewership. For I was the wrong Grammys. last week. It was good. I, I said it was going to be another lowest ratings ever year, but no, this they're up. Yeah, thirty-eight percent too. That's up thirty-eight percent. That's big. So that's over ten thousand people. I think most of us in this room <laughs> meditate, right? I, we've all talked about meditation. Oh yeah. Well, Lil John recorded a guided meditation album that's expected <laughs> to drop on Friday. He just goes, yeah, yeah. So I can't wait. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift released the track list for her upcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department. And if you thought that she snubbed Celine Dion at the Grammys, we actually talked about that yesterday. She did not. They were seen cuddling backstage. She did snub, snub her off yeah, stage. That's a, Let's be honest. That's, yeah. a, that's a make good. That's a 100% make good. That's somebody in the earpiece saying, make sure you get a picture. 
<laughs> yeah, she told me. In the midst of all these Grammy conspiracies, it's no, kind of it's funny. A business. The whole thing is li- literally Honestly, a business presentation. Now, she was getting heat for like for snubbing her on stage, which she did. She didn't acknowledge her at all. She she knows she who it walked was. past her okay. as, as if she didn't know who it was. And right. maybe she didn't know who it was, but you know the excuse was like, well, you know, she's got that. That broken bones, whatever it is, stiff man syndrome, yeah. and she didn't want to touch her. She didn't even acknowledge or say thank you to her. Wow. She just took the trophy. Maybe she was so excited. Which, fine. Admit that's what it was. Right. Maybe she just looked like a generic Canadian and she didn't want to talk to Canadians. That could be it too, Scott. Yeah. Good but point. are you guys excited for the TP department? Huh? What? The new, the new album, the TP department? What is what? Oh, the TP. The, the oh, yeah. the, 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 that's the hip you way to say. Get out of here it. with your TP. Yeah, joke. the TP department. TPD. Let's do it. Hey, let's talk RIP for a second. Yes, yesterday I mentioned Toby Keith, and today we find out that the country music star has died at the age of 62 after battling stomach cancer. He passed away peacefully on Monday, surrounded by family, according to a statement. Twenty sec. They said twenty seconds after Learn mentioned. Yeah. Well, she got in her car and drove down to Texas, and she, they said Toby Keith was surrounded by the pillow. Oh, God. Oh. Put over I did not head. kill Toby yeah. Keith on purpose. <laughs> her pillow. The pillow. Oh, my gosh, man. He fought. One his- deep breath after <laughs> your mention, and it was over. You guys, this is serious. I know it's serious. That's why we're putting it on yep. you. He fought his fight with grace and courage. He had been diagnosed with stomach cancer in 2022. He was sometimes polarizing in country music. The six foot four singer wow. broke out into the country boom years of the late 90s, crafting an identity around his macho pro American swagger and writing songs that fans love to hear. Over his career, he publicly clashed with other celebrities and journalists and often pushed back against record executives who wanted to smooth out those rough edges. So, RIP, I'm sorry, Toby, Toby Keith. Keith. All right, you guys, um, oh, and I have to mention this. King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. Buckingham Palace made the announcement saying, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Um, diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. Well, they've Holy been crap. removing the this royal prostate. Guy. I, f- I mean, don't you just feel bad for this me? finally guy. gets there. I, do, I know. I feel, I mean, obviously <sighs> I feel awful for anybody with cancer, but I mean, this guy just got into rain. You know, and what a weird Why? time for the Britain, royal right? Like, prostate. Dude, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. Yeah. Hope, yeah. I hope you see. Yeah, do wait, wish up, the man. best. Did they say it was prostate cancer? No, it was something else. So the the prostate, they thought someone was going on with the prostate. That was benign. Oh, uh, okay. So oh. They so this is something else. Something. Oh, no. Yeah, yes. we're on a, he and I, there's a few kings. We're on a Facebook group together. I'll send a nice message for Please do all. on behalf yeah. of Thanks, the show. Man. You're welcome. My hope is all right. Okay, and finally, we're going to play a little game. I don't know how this is going to go. I was listening to the Armchair Expert podcast Making dinner the other night. Could I just make a correction that I, apparently uh, Taylor Swift did say thank you to Celine. So okay. I just want to clear that up. Yeah, so there's no well, more conspiracies. You. My apologies to the Swifties out there. Yeah, you're going to get are, I'm mobilized. You need a piano? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. Just to really put it home. Wow. I mean, my apologies to the to Taylor Swift uh, family and uh, Swifty fan base. Harsh judgments from thank you. Thank you, man. Look at me when you say this. Yeah, look at him. Uh, Apparently, she did say thank you to Celine Dion during her acceptance of the album of the year. Album of the year award. She did. I think you should apologize. I hope you find it find it in your heart to forgive me, and uh, I'll be making a donation to a charity of Taylor's choice. Wow. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank well, you. You so forgot Don and Kelsey, but that's fine. <laughs> oh man, it says Canadian journalist Beverly Smith accused Swift of quote taking the trophy from Celine Dion as if it were as if she was the hat check girl. And not seeming to I realize. heard she pushed her to the ground, actually. You know what? <laughs> you guys are so terrible. <laughs> pushed her right in the throat and said, take that, stone man. Give it oh, man. All right, gosh Can damn you it, believe I just want to play right, the game. If you read her lips, sure that's expert. what she said. Play the game. Play the game. <laughs> this is going to suck so hard right now. Listen, I was listening to Armchair Expert the other day, and John Hamm was on, okay? And he mentioned, he did a little drop. So back in the 70s and the 80s, I guess, there was a rival station in Casey called KWK that is now 106.5 of the Arch, right? John Hamm's mom was the receptionist at KWK. What? How cool is that? No! So, it, so when I Judy saw- Hamm? J- uh, Judy Ham? Judy Ham. So when I saw this list that BuzzFeed put out, I thought, let's let's see if you guys can remember the celebrity that is okay. part of this little fact, okay? You give it the fact, we'll give you the celebrity. All right, yeah. here we go. First one to answer wins. So this celebrity's mom helped create the system that saved the Apollo 13 Riz. crew. Riz, go. Jack Black. Jack Black, point for wow. Riz. Very good. Yes. What about this? This well-known celebrity was once kidnapped in South Africa. 
as an adult because he was filming and the crew Rafe? and him, Rafe, Sean Penn, good guess. No, Val Kilmer. No, um, all of you are canceled. Celine Benedict Dion. Cumberbatch uh, was kidnapped in South Africa. He does look kidnappable. This well-known and well-loved heartthrob was kicked out of an elite British private school for stealing and reselling porn magazines on campus. Scott. Scott. Hugh Grant. Good guess. No. Hmm. I'm still stuck oh, on Benedict. it was Benedict. a private school. That's I'm still stuck on Benedict Cumberbatch because... If I were, you know, if things were rough and I saw him, I'd go, this guy knows people with money, for sure. Mm -hmm. Look at that face. <laughs> well, Look his name is face. Benedict. The Benedict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that would just be the bonus. Like, oh, yeah. Ransom time. Man. Uh, who? It's Robert Pattison. Robert Pattison ah, is selling Bobby. porn mags. Um, Our new Batman. This well-loved actor from The Riz Show studied Tom Cruise in order to play Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. You didn't say your name? He did not. Yes, yeah. I did. Riz. 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 My Christian name is Bale. Christian Bale. Two points for right. Riz. Well, I had my name. Moon was excited. It's his favorite. <laughs> um, this person's sex tape starts with a dedication to those lives that we lost in 9-11. You gotta be kidding me. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Moon. Uh, uh, Paris uh, Elton. Paris Elton. Point for Moon. Wow. Oh, yeah, dude. It, she says it. This goes no. Out. There's a little placard that comes up and it's like to those that we get love. No here. way. Yes. Look it up. That's very nice. Wow, there. dude. Um, was that ten nights in Paris or something? <laughs> That's what it's called, right? It's one night. One night in Paris. Night in Paris. Oh. One night in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I got a couple more for you. <laughs> this celebrity actor was convinced that he, as a child, was an alien. He also believes he has memories of being inside of his mother's womb. Uh, uh, moon. David Lee Roth. No. Roth show. I'll tell you all about it. No. Incorrect. Scott. Scott. John Malkovich. No, but he was in a movie with this actor. Oh. <laughs> John Cusack. You didn't say your name. Riz. No Scott. Point for Riz. Kevin Moon. Bacon. Not Kevin, Kevin Riz, Bacon. Riz, John Cusack. No. But Moon, uh, Joan Cusack. No, no uh, Cusacks. Uh, Rafe Nicholas Cage. Yes, point for Rafe. Uh, this just Thank sounds God. like Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and finally... These two actors that are well loved by the American people might be half brothers as they share the Moon. same. Hang on. The same famous hitman. Riz. Yep, Scott. You all. You it's all I, it's Moon. Name. It's Will Smith Wait, and DJ Jazzy no, Jazz. Yeah. At the same time, <laughs> I the answer. So three, two, one. McConaughey. Woody. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Oh. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I was off a little bit. Yeah. Same and that's your crap on celebrity. Celebrity celebrating <laughs> a birthday today. Charlie Heaton. That's Jonathan Byers from Stranger Things is 30. Dane Dehan. Uh, that's Metallica's heroic roadie and Metallica through the never. Uh, he's 38. What? Chris, I don't know, man. I don't have to mention every name. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> he's also in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There you have it. Chris Humphreys is 39. Crystal Reed from Gotham and Teen Wolf on MTV is 39. Alice... Eve from She's Out of My League, Men in Black 3, Star Trek, and John Cusack's Edgar Whoa. Allan Poe movie, The Raven, is 42. Rick Astley is 58. Axel Rose is 62. Richie McDonald is 62. That's Lone Star's lead singer. Kathy Najimy is 67. She is Wendy from Veep. She's also in the Sister Act movies and Hocus Pocus. <sighs> Tom uh, Bukalki uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is 84. And Mike Farrell, that's Captain Honeycutt from MASH, is 85 years Dude, old. Tom Brokaw's 84. Damn. Tom, I love Tom Brokaw. Uh, Bukalki. Uh, 84. <laughs> Uh, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's for Fun and Fantasy Meet, is Daisy Marie. Today's birthday girl has been in 611 fine films, including Badass Barrio Babes, Ball Honeys 6 and 11, Be My Bitch 2, she was in Chica Freaks, Hogtied Businesswomen, Lay's Anatomy, Naked Damsels in Distress, Reform School Girls 1, Scott's favorite, Yummy in My Tummy 2, and who can forget her role in 2005's Small Sluts, Nice Butts 3. Mm. Cool. Daisy Marie is 40 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. Hey, is our buddy Randy here? Yes, he, he is, is here. Oh, I'm going to talk uh, St. Louis Cycle Showcase next.
the annual event happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday at the Moto Museum. So we'll get all the details from Randy coming up next. It is 9.08. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got a right lane block due to a crash 270 southbound at Olive. Uh, there's also two lanes blocked due to a crash 64 westbound at Kings Highway Boulevard. Your point forecast, partly cloudy today. High of 55 right now. It's 39 at the point studio. Back to the Riz Show. Joining us in studio, Mr. Randy Knowles. <laughs> and we're here to talk about the Cycle Showcase St. Louis. It's been a year since you've been in studio. Yes, sir. I can't believe it's another year of the Cycle Showcase this weekend. This weekend coming up. It's at the uh, Moto Museum. Yes, sir. Uh, which is which is where? Uh, Thirty four oh eight Locust. It's right over by the uh, uh, Fox Theater. Okay, um, a block south of the big tent, the big top. Yeah, the new circus floor. In. You never been down there? No. It's so freaking cool. Dude. It is cool. Yeah. It's a cool spot. It's called the Grand Center Arts District. Yeah. So a lot of That's a cool area. That's a cool yeah. area down there. Yeah. Uh, but this, I mean, if you are a motorcycle enthusiast, if you love custom-built bikes, these are these are not just motorcycles. These are pieces of art. They are. And I like the way you guys, are you still doing the unveiling every 15 minutes? Yes. Well, now we've got so many unveilings. Um, this format has really taken off. A couple years ago, we started doing unveilings, and we did eight last year. Uh, we did 21, and this year we're up to 34. Damn. Uh, 34 of the 50 bikes that are coming in are never before seen in public uh, machines. Yeah, so, so, so Rafe's, you know, have you heard of Cycle Showcase? So uh -uh. it's a really cool event where these bike builders from all over the country. All over the world. All now. over the... We're, we're getting I stand there. corrected. Global. Man. You know, but it's, yes. it's all over the it's world. It's super cool. You don't have to be an enthusiast. This is like one of those things where you, you, you like take your kids down there and you kind of walk around and everybody's just like, whoa, whoa. I mean, like, you can be new to it. This is actually a, probably a perfect type of event for people that are new to motorcycles. Completely. Yeah. And, th and that's who I, I market this for. Um, families, uh, kids, to see a kid put a tablet down and not look at it for two hours. What? Yeah, yeah. And that's a thing? Nice. Kids do that <laughs> and to, now? Uh -huh. And to walk around with their eyes wide open and, and pointing and looking and being inspired is, is is what it's mostly about. Yeah, it's a show. It's a show. So, I, listen, I used to watch that show, American Chopper, where they would custom build those bikes. and sure. Some of those ones. So, it's kind of that style where these guys would custom build these pieces. <clears throat> there's there's some of that, but there's race bikes. There's uh, historic bikes. There's vintage bikes. There's, That's cool. Um, everything. Uh, European, Japanese. It's in the Moda Museum, so there's already like 80 incredible uh, vintage European bikes in there just as a setting, just mm. as a backdrop. And, and then I, I bring another 50 in on top of that. How many years have you been doing this? This is the ninth show in 11 years. Nice. We took a couple of years off of that one thing. But. And you're doing a thing before this event at Del Mar Hall, right? Oh, well. Um, yeah, we, uh, we mentioned that uh, we got bikes coming in from all over the country, all over the world. This is the first year I've got Japanese uh, uh, participants. A couple, a couple of guys from Japan are bringing uh, bikes over and some artwork. Um, thrilled that the word of the show is getting out that that uh, this is a worthy event mm -hmm. uh, for builders and, and uh, restorers. Um, but we've got all these guys coming into town on Friday and, and loading in and setting up, and the show doesn't open until Saturday. Everybody's like, what are we going to do? Said, yeah. Let's throw a party at Delmar Hall. Nice. <laughs> uh, so I called up Delmar Hall. He said, yeah, we don't have anything. I said, all right, book it. And uh, we're going to have a meet the builders party on Friday night. Oh, that's good. And how could, can anybody come? Anybody can come. It's free to come. Free to come. Free to hang out. Um, our good friends at Four Hands Brewery have done a beer for us again. Nice. Uh, they make a, they're making a cycle showcase lager this year. That's cool. And uh, yeah, we're going to unveil that on Friday night. We got a little one man band playing. It's real casual, just a fun hangout with a bunch of uh, a bunch of bike folks. Um, man, what are the logistics of getting a bike over from Japan? Right. Like, I mean, they're putting on a, how are they getting these bikes over? Putting them on a container? On a and, container. And yeah. shipping them over? And then, the, and then what's been the big thing was uh, customs and what's the bike coming over for? Is it being sold and you have to pay tariffs on it and all this? Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. But, <clears throat> but when you see these, it's worth it. How it's, does it take to get in from Japan? Um, I had some artwork shipped that only took a week. Oh, okay. Um, but the bikes, uh, you know, it's a slow boat. It's weeks. So. Oh, cool. weeks. So these yeah. guys are putting their, their pride and joys, their babies, 
Out well, to sea. Out to sea. Uh, yes, out to sea. Um, and the, and they're and they're going to hop around after they do cycle showcase. This is their inaugural event here uh, this year. Um, they're going to hop around and do uh, sh- a couple other shows here in the mm-hmm. states, like Bike Week. Go down to Bike Week here in a couple of weeks and do that too. You so, know, you mentioned it's for you know you're, you're marketing you know to families and kids. Now, kids do get in for free. If you're under 15, if you're under 15 or 15 or under whatever, uh, would it be, you know, would it pay it all? It's 12, it's 1250 for like a two, you get a two day wristband for that two day wristband. You come on Saturday, nice. we'll give you a wristband. You come back Sunday, dude, free. That's awesome. It is yeah. cool. Cheaper than a heavy meal. That's a, that's a great event. So it's over 50 historically significant, handcrafted, timeless works of two wheeled art. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Is that a good way of putting it? That sounds great to me, man. <laughs> Randy, I read the- that right from your website, by the way. I stole that. <laughs> my, my, my publicist. Did Julie. you write that? No, I'm like, damn, my, dude, that's, Ju- that's pretty good. Julie, my publicist. <laughs> Thank you. What is, like the cool, in your opinion, the coolest motorcycle in, in culture? Oh. Uh, um, like for, that we would know like in films or TV shows. Oh, it's got to be the Easy Rider Chopper. You think so? Yeah, it's the most iconic chopper probably. Yeah. yeah. Is that the most famous, mo- you think that's the most famous motorcycle of all time? Probably. Yeah. It's gotta be, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah. What about Ralphie from Christmas Story, his motorcycle? Oh. What? Remember that movie where he played a kid that had dirt a bike bi- kid? Yeah, dirt bike kid. Thank oh, you. okay. Yeah. I love that you referenced a different movie to get that. <laughs> I couldn't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tr- all right, so I'm trying to think of the most famous. Well, I mean, remember Steve fond- McQueen's fond- motorcycle from Bullet? Yes, Steve McQueen's uh, <laughs> uh, bike in the Great Escape. Yeah, that's a big it? one. Yeah. Um, Basically, uh, anything with an American flag tank, right? This thing, yeah. yeah Evil Knievel's yeah, bike. That's it. And- all right, Evil Knievel's. All right, so what are the most iconic motorcycles in history? So, right. okay, so the Easy Rider motorcycle. Um, Fonzie's, Fonzie's motorcycle. Fonzie's Triumph has got to be one. It's an Indian somewhere too, right? Wasn't there a big? Maybe that was a Van Damme. Oh well, that was the, that was the movie with uh, Bert. Uh, uh, the story of Bert Monroe, the world's fastest Indian. That was uh, yeah. That's oh, a, man, that's iconic, a good question. That's iconic. Motorcycle. Let's see. Yeah. Top Gun, the Kawasaki, and Co- and Top Gun. Um, what about the uh, the Nicolas Cage character? The a Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Kill Bill, another Kawasaki. Um, First Blood. I don't know. I'm just naming things off like I know. Um, Matrix Reloaded, a Ducati 996. Ducati's one of our sponsors this year, and they're bringing in this super rare bike that we're going to unveil. Um, I think they only made 200 of these, and you have to you have to have previously owned like six Ducatis in your life. Wow. And, Whoa. And uh, have to sign up to be in a lottery to to actually be able to purchase one of these. It's a Ducati super bike that they race. And That's cool. We're going to unveil that at the show. That's what about the, uh, the Arnold bike? Uh, from from oh, uh, Terminator yes. 2? Yeah, yeah. The T2. fat boy. Yes. So uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, Marlon Brando's uh, Triumph Thunderbird T6 in the wild one from 1953. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Harley Davidson Panhead from Easy Rider. Uh, yeah, Top Gun. Uh, dude, the Honda CM400 from Purple Rain. Hey. Oh, yes. Terminator 2. Both bikes yeah. from Terminator What two. about Tron? Would Include, those count? Including his, uh, uh, the little dude's um, Enduro. Right? I mean, the one that he's on all the time, like the little dirt bike. What movie? Uh, in, ter- in, ter- in Terminator Oh, yeah, two. yeah, yeah. Edward Furlong's character? Yeah, John, John, yeah. John Connor's, well, I guess young, young John Young Connor. John Connor, yeah. He's got the little dirt bike in the beginning. Yeah. And then it goes to that is Yeah, that is iconic. All right, so Soccer Showcase St. Louis, Saturday and Sunday, the Moto Museum, 1250 for a wristband with access to both days. Kids under 15 are free with the paid adult. Yes, sir. And you got 50-plus historically significant handcrafted timeless works of two-wheeled art from around the world here in our fair city. All right, Randy's here. Hang on one second. We got to take a break. We'll oh, come back. We forgot. Wow. I mean, the most famous two-wheeler in, in movie history is definitely the scooter for Lloyd and... Uh, Oh, uh, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just Probably. go, man. Huge hit. <laughs> All right. I mean, it got peed on, for God's sakes, yeah. somewhere through the Rockies. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, <laughs> Randy's going to hang out through the break. We'll come back with uh, today's very special headline news story. All right. I want Randy's take on it. Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, 926. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by World by Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Two lanes blocked due to a crash 64 westbound at Kings Highway. Your point forecast, partly cloudy, high of 55. Right now it's 39 at the point studio. 
Uh, Randy Knowles in studio talking about Cycle Showcase St. Louis, which is this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, the Moto Museum. That's a Saturday 11 to 7, Sunday 11 to 4. Over 50 historically significant handcrafted timeless works of two-wheeled art. Uh, <laughs> are you having chair problems? What the heck are you guys doing? We're stuck. What the hell happened? Just playing games. Okay, we're all right. We're working here. You got, you, I thought you guys were playing footsie. Yeah, well. Our cords uh, are getting crossed. Cords crossed. We're a mess in here. Here we are. Um, all right, well, I tell you what. So <laughs> Sunday, the event ends at 4, which, you know, leaves enough time for people to go and watch Super Bowl. The what? The, the, you know, the big game. The, the big game, Randy. The, the what? There's a, there's a what? The big game. Uh-huh. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, do you know what number this is, by the way? What Super Bowl 58. number it is? 58. 58. Correct. Do you know why they still use Roman numerals? No, oh, no. Because they want to outsmart people. Got to get my pen here. Let's see. Because they're mythical beasts. <laughs> Stop it. Um, do you know? Do you know why they use Roman numerals? No, I do not. I do. God, why? It's because uh, Lamar Hunt, when yeah. he was first designing it and and called it Super Bowl. He didn't want the number getting confused because if somebody said, "Oh, we won Super Bowl to 23 for the you know, the, like the 2023 season, yeah. is it the 2023 season or is it the 2024 season since they play the season uh, the majority in 23? Yeah, so the winner the of this year's Super Bowl will be recognized as a 23 champion, not the 24 champion. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Right. Yeah, wow. so, so they than mud. Yes, yeah, so, well they didn't want to get confused, so they just said, "Ah, we'll just start over. We'll do Super Bowl 1." And that's why now you can take that knowledge, put it in your back pocket, pull that out if you want to sound smart. I still don't understand the Roman numeral part. I don't either. I don't know. I think they're just still trying be to be Super Bowl 58, and you can just say 58. Yeah, I think they're yeah. just trying to be fancy there. But um, I do appreciate that it isn't like the season thing. Because that, is a, that, is a, that could that be a That part's obnoxious. cool. I like that. I just don't understand the Roman numerals, how that connects. Yeah. But. It looks cool, though. Um, cool. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe... It's kind of like cursive writing. Like, can we just phase out Roman numerals? We don't need them anymore. Other than Whoa. the Super Bowl, what else are we using? Yeah, I said That's it. it. I mean, is the Super Bowl clocks? Kind of, maybe yeah, the Super Bowl is kind of keeping like the Roman Empire clocks. around. Say what? The like clocks. Yeah, but I mean, when's the last time you ran into one that really is using Roman numerals? Yeah, man. In, in all honesty, crap. Does yours have Roman numerals on it? <laughs> yeah. Your fancy watch? I looked at my watch and went, For more toys? Crap. Yeah, it's got Roman numerals on it. <laughs> it does. Clocks or watches, that's it. Super Bowl is the, is the last it's bastion. It's only got to 12, though. Is, is one of the last bastions of, uh, of Roman Dang. numerals. That's it. <laughs> I think it's time to be done with it. It really did. Me too. Happened perfectly, didn't it? Because you're like, okay, L, V, I, I, I. So silly. God, I'm, you know what I'm going to show my kids? You want to, you, do you know what 100 is? Uh, is it C? I think it is C. Do you know what 1,000 is? <sighs> 10 Cs. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's M. Uh, yeah, you're right. So if you were to do M. like the year, it would be like. Yeah, yeah. It is M. Yeah, it you could do like M, M. You guys want to know what 10,000 looks like? Yeah, go ahead. Tell me. It's an X with just a line across it. Whoa. That's it? Yeah. No. You want, oh, man, hey, you guys want to know what like a million is? Or yeah. what, 100,000? Yeah, what is it? Like. 100,000 Roman numeral. It's a C with a bar over it. Yeah. What about a million? You what care? is that? It's starting to make Tell sense me. now. Generating. Generating. <laughs> it's an M with a bar over it. Cool, dude. Yeah. Wow. Now we know. Oh, bars. Now we know. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna write L, <laughs> L V I I I and I'm going to show it to my kids to see if they could. They'd have no idea. Levi. Dad, you spelled Levi wrong. What number is this? Like, Dad's having a stroke. You goof. Not cool, man. Let's just What space number it is out. this, kids? They may stab me. <laughs> <laughs> I may get shanked by one of the kids. Stop making me look stupid. I'm trying to think of what 2023 would be. So it'd be M M X X. Oh, don't I, make I, your brain I. explode. Right? M M X X I. That's 2024 is M M X X I V. So 2023 would be, God, this is great radio. Yeah, that would be it. MMXX. Describing I, I, I. Neato. See? Okay. Now, now we're all educated. Super. That's neat. Now we can beat we King Scott. Oh, wait a second. I forgot my pen. Can you repeat all that? You know it's neat. <laughs> and that's sponsored by Moritz Roish. The official jeweler of the Rizzuto Show. All right, so uh, Randy, you ever been to Ocala, Florida? 
Uh, yes, I have. Shh, man, we got a lot of headline who stories out of Ocala, Florida. Yes. And I think that's the uh, home of Don Perdome's Drag Racing Museum. All right. Nice. <laughs> that's one for Ocala. That's awesome. Point for Ocala. Because yeah, I'm mean, going to tell you what, they have a lot of, a lot of great stories coming out of uh, Ocala. And uh, we go to Ocala, where last week, 38-year-old Michael DaCosta was charged with retail theft and indecent exposure after robbing a church-run thrift store. Oh, while naked. How far yeah. he has fallen. I mean, from the uh, the tank photo when he was trying to run for vice president. Uh-huh. No, that's oh Michael DeCostas. This is Michael DeCosta. Oh. Uh, a bonus charge was added after cops found that he'd violated his probation. So this all happened at the Wings of Faith thrift store. Mm-hmm. So Michael walked into the place completely naked. I mean. Looking for clothes. Hanging I mean, brains. Yep. Sounds like he needed it. Yeah. Asked for clothes. Yeah. An employee gave him a pair of shorts and asked him to kindly vacate the premises. Here's your shorts. Get the hell out of here. Nice. But he ran out of the store with a stolen T-shirt. Oh, no. Aww. The store employee told police that he made zero effort to cover his dingling up and was acting crazy. You don't say. Uh, cops later found Michael running down the road naked. I guess he ditched the shorts. He was given at some point. Uh, placed under arrest, transported to the Ocala jail. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Maybe he was running to the racing museum. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe he's in the racing museum for maybe. how fast he maybe. ran naked. Yeah, and, if you know? and if it's big enough, maybe he was dragging something to the drag race. Hey. Should be. Hey. Wow. wow. So you go from Ocala, Florida, Michael DaCosta, you are today's headline hooge. Congratulations. Woo! All right, uh, one more time. The Cycle Showcase St. Louis is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday at the Moto Museum. Uh, any website they should go to for tickets? How are we getting tickets? Uh, tickets are at the door. Just rock right up the door. to the door. Yeah, I'm not uh, cutting any ticket agencies in. It's Good. Just uh, <laughs> Good. straight, yeah. The Good. tickets are 12 but with fees, they'll be $74. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. tw I got twelve fifty here, <laughs> and kids deal. under 15 get in for free. Yeah, yeah just so rock up to the door, old school. Good restaurants around that area, too, so, like, make a night of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. hang out, like, do dinner before and head make on over. Make a day, make a night well, of it. I'm going to have food there, too. All right, yeah, eat there. Oh, so we food, food there, too? All right, eat there. Never mind Sweet. on these restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Come hang out. Yeah. Hang out, see some bikes. You got the party at Del Mar on uh, Del Mar Hall on Friday. On Friday night, the pre-party. The pre-party with a one-man, dude, a one-man band. That's 21 got... and up, by the way. I did look. 21 and okay, up. Okay, yeah, that, that event is 21 Well, up. then you got the Four Hands Brewery uh, with their... Unveiling of the can. Unveiling of the can for the yeah. Cycle Showcase. Dude, you gotta, it's a big weekend for Randy. I love this. Ooh, everything's coming Randy. up, Randy. Mm -hmm. Everything's coming up, Randy. Woo. All right, thank you, my brother, as always. All right, we'll take one final break. We'll come back, wrap her up. All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. Before we before we leave, breaking news. So remember the Winter Classic back in 2017? NHL Winter Classic, it was the Blues and the Blackhawks over at Bush Stadium. Yes. Well, they just announced next year's Winter Classic, literally hot off the presses. It's going to be the Blues. Nice. It's going to be the Blackhawks. Nice. At Wrigley Field. Oh, well. That's, that's hey, still cool. Still that's really, really awesome. cool. That's kind of neat. Yeah, that'll that's be good. That's still cool. So Blackhawks to host 2025 Blues, Winter Classic right? at Wrigley Field against the Blues. Hey. And that's usually January 1st. Breaking yeah. news of my own. Usher is coming to Enterprise Center on Saturday, October 26th. The man who is playing the Super Bowl halftime show will be here in St. Louis. Usher, Usher. Usher, Usher. I said, my... yeah. Oh, man. I still got a little Usher VIP cologne in the console of my mm. old car. Now it's Joe time. You guys, my husband had two posters of Usher given to him by his mother and grandma when he was in high school and college. <laughs> so he had so Usher that. hanging on his dorm room walls, dude. Why? I'm gonna get Were tickets. they surprised when he married hmm? a girl? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ask for a back? Usher was so hot. Anyway. <laughs> you make me want it. <laughs> anyway, um, today's uh, wrap-up is Sponsored by. It's sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. All right, what is today's podcast titled? We're teenagers tipping this over. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. That did come up today. Uh, all right, what do you? What else you got? Uh, can you feel the punk tonight, May 11th? That is going to be such a fun show. Th uh, two shows, 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. It's a family show, but you don't have to have family come alone if you wish. It's going to be a ton of fun. We sold out last year, and it's awesome. Make sure you get your tickets now. You can get them on the Point website or the Pageant website. Learn. Follow me on the socials, Learn Versus Radio, and follow my band on the socials, Lane Narrows. we got a bunch of shows coming up. Rafe. I got nothing. Scott. 
I have something very exciting. If you guys like breakfast burritos, yes. you got to look at my social media because I have a cool paid campaign thing I'm going to post up. Very cool. And when, today's when that, is this happening? Today. Okay. Yeah. Isn't today Goose Day? It is very much Goose Day. So the ultimate thing on social media uh, will be the headline Goo. Yeah. So, yeah, follow Wait King's Scout Rules. Or I am Rafe Williams. One of those two will get me there. All right. Cool. <laughs> One thanks of those for not two doing. Will get thanks me for not there. doing the Venmo thing today. I appreciate you giving yeah. that, you that day off. All right, we'll leave you with a selection from our teamers. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shots, St. Louis home for Blues hockey from Arnold, Missouri. Danny uh, Danny Clagus is our yeah, team. Yeah. And Danny wants to hear this song. Here it is. We will see you tomorrow. Done it next. Bye. Energy up. Hey, St. Louis. This is Rascal Flats. Me and my gang always hang out with. Us.